Hello, good evening, everyone from all over the world. It's a global stage right now. And we're sorry to have kept you waiting. Um, they call me Professor Lee, Lai Olatunji. And I'll be, I and um, Inke Chimodi are going to be your, your hosts for today. And right now, I'm going to turn it over to the convener of LJS, the Lagos Jazz Society, to say a few words. Then after that, we dive straight into the program. Once again, thanks for coming around. We are delighted and excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Or oh, good afternoon? So I apologize. If I'm not Hello? Sorry, I can barely hear you. Let me just stop my video and try again. Please check your sound. There's an yeah, interference from your side. But you said I should check my what? Hello? Hello? We can hear Hello, you. Go ahead. Okay, great. Go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm not available because I'm wrong. Um, I'm also, I'm running the office in my state in Germany, so I will just read. There's some interference. I don't know whether that's coming. Perhaps can ask you. Sorry, and can we just send her to me? Um, yeah, you. I oh. think you need. I think you need to go maybe indoors. I think it's the wind or something. No, there's Hello. no wind here. Okay, it's better. That's better. Yes, it's clear. It was from somebody else. 
Yeah, I think okay, other thank people just you. need I'm to mute their mic. Every, everyone else me. needs to mute their mic, otherwise there will be interference. The person speaking should be the only person with a mic on. When there are two or three mics on, there's always interference. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd like to just welcome everyone. Um, and uh, just thank you all for making the time to be here. Happy birthday, Baba Jimmy. Uh, the Lagos Jazz Society is having this event in honor of our living legend, Baba Agba, Baba Jimmy Sholanke. Um, the Lagos Jazz Society was established to bring jazz and music performers and enthusiasts together. And in the past six years, the group has supported, curated, and hosted jazz and music events, including concerts, conferences, and jazz conversations inviting both local and international stakeholders to speak and attend. We had quite a few of those during the COVID lockdown. That was great fun. Now, the future of the LJS sees it blossoming into a strong advocate for the genre of music, as well as setting standards in performance, intellectual property, and other art-related activities. It was founded by my good self, E.A. Jonathan, um, with support from so many of you on here. And it has its base in Lagos, but we have members in Abeokuta, Abuja, the UK, the USA, and many other places. Of course, we have our official meal, uh, our official food, which is Amala. So it has led many members to tour Amala joints in Lagos, celebrating the rich meal of yam flour, the soup, Ewedu as we know it, and bean soup. And I really thank to thank, I'd like to thank all those who are involved in organizing this uh, event, so the, the organizing committee, uh, Kuro, uh, Prof Lee, as we call him, who's uh, one of your moderators tonight in Kechi, uh, Down C, and uh, I'm sorry if I've missed out anyone and a few others who have been on that committee, uh, Mr. Biodun Batik, uh, who is also one of the speakers. A uh, majority of the speakers tonight are also members of LJS. So Peter Fisher, Ayinke Martins, Bright Gain, uh, Ayodele Shadari, as we, as we call him, Shadi Bobo, and of course, Mr. Biodun Batik himself, Biodun Adebi, um, as others know him. So I'd like to ask us to just relax, enjoy. Um, one of the reasons we decided to host this, and I'd also like to thank um, our brother, Ogajam and, and, and Nikulaku, for just uh, uh, being one of those who really encouraged us also as we were organizing this. Um, and, you know, we, we decided to host this because the contributions of Pajimi to the arts in Nigeria will not be complete without a recognition of his presence in the jazz scene in Nigeria from the 1960s till date. Some call him the High Life Prince. And I think it would not be misplaced to call him a jazz prince as well. But Jimmy has serenaded Nigerians for decades with his deep baritone in the jazz tradition of the best of them, such as Louis Armstrong and Frank Sinatra. We hear them swear him sometimes in Freedom Park. He's a thespian of the finest water. But Jimmy is beloved by many who grew up listening to him tell folk tales and sing on TV and radio. We're therefore extremely delighted to celebrate you, but Jimmy Sholanke at 80, and as jazz, jazz lovers, we're especially delighted anytime we catch you on stage, whether it's at Freedom Park or any other place, showing us how it is done jazz-wise. So we hope that this conference will be enlightening for us all and do justice to the greatness that is Baba Jimmy Sholanke, who we hear by title in LJS, the Grand Commander of Nigerian Jazz, High Life, and Folklore. On that note, we, the LJS, close out these remarks by calling for formal national honors to be bestowed on Baba Jimmy Sholanke for his contributions to the Nigerian art. No one is more deserving than he. Happy birthday, Pajimi Baba Agba. And we welcome you all and thank you all for making the time to be with us this evening. Have a great conference. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Miss A. I love to call you. Thanks for that quick run that what we are doing and talking about Fajimi. Um, we've been on this for a couple of days now, and right here with us, beside me, is I mentioned in Kitchen Mori earlier on, as in Kitchen, with the Hello, <laughs> uh, yeah, and we'll be anchoring this program. We are going to see both of us at different times, so get used to our faces. Yeah. Like yeah. So <laughs> next next thing we're gonna do now, we're going to call in um German. Tell us something about Bavadba, what has been going on, things that have been done, 
we are just happy to have been able to post a small bit of this eight day youth celebration going on. So it's going to give us what has been done and what is to come. So, Ogadja man, over to you, sir. Well, um, good evening. Hello. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My name is German Anikulaku, and uh, I'm just uh, here to support uh, the course that is going on. Uh, the camera is hooked to my sisters. And I'm just uh, going to just say thank you very much for attending. Uh, some things are happening here, but I, I won't go into all those technical challenges and, and, and go. So you can see me now. <laughs> awesome. So the Jimmy Sholanke uh, 80th birthday was conceived as a one week uh, program. When we started uh, on Friday with the Oreo uh, uh program, please, if you're seeing my background, the way it is, we are at uh, uh, Bogobiri. Here, yeah, Bogobiri House is on the Maitama Sule Street, which is uh, in Ikoyi. So, what we're doing uh, here is the first time we said, let's bring in um, both the, the hybrid format now to have a live event and have uh, uh, us on Zoom. So, today we're here at Bogobiri. That's why my background is coming in the Bia Palo. We're actually sitting down here at Bogobiri, which is uh, one of the arts the art place that you can find in Lagos. So they give all this place uh, uh, free of charge because Jimmy Shulan can normally stays there uh, when he's in Lagos and he also is always here with them. So uh, the eight day program started on Friday. On Friday, we had the Oreo Lokum alumni come from. If you check Jimmy Shulan career, he started uh, his life earlier and he was at the uh, Oreo Lokum in Nife that really made his, uh, his first mark. That's why he's, um, uh, he was celebrated by the uh, Oreo Lokum group, the alumni group founded by Professor Oni Ikoka, who is the director of School of Arts and Media uh, in San Diego State University, where one of us actually just came back from uh, Kenny. Yeah, the one they call the, the smallest, okay, the youngest, okay, the prettiest in LGS. <laughs> and Kenny is there by my side. So she, she just came back from there. So Kuroni Koka is one hosting us. So we're in technical uh, partnership with them. So we did the Oreo Lokun on Friday. And on uh, Saturday, an album, I'll talk about this album again. An album was launched uh, called Oba Oba to see another dimension of uh, uh, Jimmy Shulanke. That Jimmy Shulanke is also a gospel. But somebody wrote to me and said, Jimmy Shulanke and gospel in the same sentence is an anomaly. And I was going to believe that until I saw that only two tracks from the uh, eighth track is actually gospel. The rest are some of the classics of Jimmy Shulanke. And eventually you see some of the video that have been done. Uh, I can't see the producer in the house, I will have introduced him. So on Sunday, on Sunday, I mean, uh, on Sunday, uh, we had the, uh, we had the iLife uh, conference. We also belong to the iLife movement. So they did exactly they did the, exactly what we're doing here today, which is the, to trace the root and influence of uh, of uh, Jimmy Shulanke in uh, iLife music. I'm sorry, I'm looking down because the table is so low, but I'll look up eventually. So we did that on uh, so that we had a lot of discussion there. In fact, um, it was heavy uh, in terms of the content that we generated from there which you hope that will become a book eventually. And you can also address the recordings for a documentation on this one. But one thing we don't do well in this country is to document. So uh, yesterday was actually the birthday. And that's why Jimmy Shulanke is not here yet. He's going to join us on Zoom while he's on the way. Yesterday, they had a huge party in a para, as well as his um, uh, Ibuduasha. He's launched this center for culture and develop, uh, for cultural enhancement. He built a place which was a promise he made to his father that he was going to go back. You know, he left home so early because uh, the father, who was the leader of uh, Epara, would not um, 
tolerate his own son just being an archivist, I like me. So the man left home in anger and ran away. So, but the father said, you must make a promise to me that you come back and build a monument in the name of our family. And now you have done it. It's called Ibudu Asha, which is the center for. Can somebody unfreeze Mr. German, please? He's frozen. That could be the internet link that he has. So in the meantime, can somebody just fill in the gap? All right, then okay. while we are while we are trying to the process of that German, it's an internet thing as Peter Fisher said. So while we are trying to the first can can you hear me well? Okay, I think German is back. I'm sorry, German, German, I'm so sorry. What happened was uh, Nigeria was happy to me on the internet. You cut me off. So what I was saying was that uh, yesterday was a birthday, and they, they dedicated the Ibudu Asha, which is the cultural center that I had just built because of the promise he made to his father. And that's why he's not here, because they had a huge, they had a huge uh, party yesterday, which lasted into the night. So today, we're doing the jazz. I eventually I'll get to the other program. He's going to start his mentorship program from tomorrow. He's going to go to National Theater. People don't know that Jimmy Shulanka is also a playwright. So tomorrow they will have uh, you'll be reading from me, they'll be reading from his book, uh, HT, All Eyes on You, which is uh, in tandem with what we say about the, the current state of Nigeria that young people should be involved in our uh, national life. So the HT is a book that is saying that young people uh, young people should be involved in uh, national development, discourse around national development. So they'll be reading from that. Then you go to Bariga to go and do mentorship with the Bariga Art Collective at the Crown Art Factory, uh, led by Chef Gumadefila. From there, on Thursday, you'll be in Lasso. In Lasso, you'll be talking to students of music and drama. You'll be having like four or five hours of mentorship. Let them ask questions about their career, about how it got into where, uh, where he's been to and uh, uh, how he has made success of his career. Then on Friday, which is the rap, that was a live about five bands that we playing there on that day, and some actors and performers from Africa, a few so you told Saka that you know on television, quite a lot. We got Dilaja, prime, uh, prime uh, uh, Key West of Yenkala uh, Kija, Frank Key West, they will be performing. Uh, DJ Brown is directing that. I'm sure he's going to join us and we will do that. So I was talking about this book. Uh, I was talking about this book that uh, three projects were launched to honor Jimmy Shulanke. Three projects, because the whole idea is to make sure that we document this man so that people get to know uh, who Jimmy Shulanke is. In fact, somebody told us uh, in May that when they mentioned Jimmy Shulanke, they said, well, no, but the man is dead. But this man is alive because there is no document to see your name, or maybe people are not reading enough. So this, this celebration, I said to host him for three, uh, to do three projects that we introduce in Michelin and Kepo Palais to us. So one is the album I mentioned, which is Oba Wamba, to show another dimension to Michelin and Kepo. It's not just into high life or jazz or folklore, it's also into gospel. Uh, you need to listen to the album. I hope the producers will join us eventually to do that. Uh, the second project is what I'm holding now. It's a book that I've been written on Jimmy Shulanke, but which could not make it into this uh, event. But it's ready for, you can see that this is the mock copy. It is read about 400 pages and it's going to uh, be released officially by book, uh, Bookcraft by the end of the uh, month or into next month. If you want to pre order, you can send message to LGS. That's the, the um, Legal Jazz Society, you can, send, you can search Bookcraft online. They have a very good uh, 
website. And then if you have my number two, which is on the most of the interior card, you can also send me. It's a beautiful book to tell the story of the Michelin and it pays tribute to quite a lot of people. The next, the next project, which is also Glani to us, is the idea. Uh, because we've lost time, I'm going to just tell Ayo to just speak for. Uh, I'm trying to look for Ayo so I can spotlight him to quickly speak about uh, about this. We're having light uh, issue here. Yeah? And I like it. Uh, I'm trying to spotlight Ayo, the producer, because he's in the house there. Just to spotlight him to speak about the uh, about his fame. He's there, but I'm looking for him. Uh, Ayo Atom. Ayo, please unmute yourself. Hello, Ayo. You have just two minutes to quickly speak about this thing. Don't go into your connection with the map, because we are going to see it in the film. Hello, Ayo. Yes, Baba Jaman, can you hear me? Oh, okay, yes, please. But you have two minutes for now, because we are going to show the film after, so. Yeah, there is really not much to say. The film speaks for itself. It's just my tribute to Baba and a way of saying thank you for the mentorship. So to say thank you for his mentorship and everything he's done for the arts generally and for, I mean, and to document his story for posterity. That's all I have to okay. say for now and to speak with you. Did he mention the title of the film? Um, the film is it's called very, Jimmy Show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you me. very much. Jimmy Show is 89 minutes and we are going to be showing it uh, at the end of this whole session because we have to go into the, panel, uh, the plenary now. Thank you very much that I've been... Uh, the only the only thing I have to say for now. Hello, good evening. I hope, I hope we all uh, we all enjoying um, this discussion into the life of um Jibishulante Papa and uh, Jimmy Show, or the, of me, the show, and so many other names people put in front of me. Um, to do justice to today's um, presentation, we have a couple, of, a couple of speakers. So we're going to start with um, Mr. Peter Fisher, who is also known as the Batman, right? Mr. Um, Mr. Peter Fisher is trained by great artist and Jimmy. And for over 40 years, he's been working with various artists from Femi Kuti and the Positive Force and um, The Break, Survival, and so many others. He's a devoted jazz enthusiast and the creator and host of the best well, African radio show in the country, best African jazz radio show in the country, and arguably, on the continent, and it's um, called Jazz and Conversations on Lagos Stokes. Now in its sixth year, his mission is to promote original jazz produced by African musicians on the continent and by those abroad, covering the wide spectrum of jazz in Africa. And um, African jazz, and he also believes that African jazz is not world music, but a legitimate jazz genre in its own right. Long overdue for that global recognition. Let's welcome okay. Peter Fisher with a warm round of applause. <laughs> Over to you, Mr. Peter Fisher. Hello, good Before evening, yours. everybody. Uh, can everybody can everybody hear me? Say yay. Oh, say <laughs> yay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, firstly. I, uh, because of who we are celebrating, I need to I need to tell a little story about my first encounters with Jimmy Sholanke, and that was in the 70s in Ibadan, in the early 70s. In those days, there was a thriving art uh, and cultural movement in Ibadan, mostly centered around the UI Arts Theatre. And if there was anything that was going on in that arts theater and Jimmy Sholanke was involved, you made sure that you didn't miss it. Whether it was spoken word, whether it was uh, a music performance, whether it was acting, 
um, whatever. I mean, he was brilliant. I mean, even on television, uh, I can't remember the name of the program, but there's there's so many shows that were on television with him. In fact, I actually thought this the 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 art of spoken word was gone until uh, I think some years ago. There's some younger of the younger generation who were reviving it and so on and so forth. So to say that, I mean, uh, Pa Jimmy Sholanke is uh, he's at the core of most of what is happening in arts and culture in Nigeria today. That's what I believe, you know. But since I've been asked to talk about a specific area which is media and African jazz. Um, I'm glad that Mr. Batik is, is on the call because I'm sure he will, he will buttress some of the things that I'm going to say. If we're speaking of media, I think we're talking about radio, we're talking about television, and we're talking probably about the, uh, the printed press. As far as the printed press goes, there's nothing on, on that. Uh, there's been no, not almost virtually nothing that's ever done to support African jazz or Nigerian jazz at all. On television, there's very little. I think there's some on maybe DSTV or something, but I don't think there's very much locally. Where there has been much inroad is in is on radio with the likes of my show and the likes of um, uh, the show on Lagos, uh, Lagos Traffic, uh, which comes up on Sunday and mine on Saturday. And I think this is where there's a, there, part, this is part of the problem. We are not promoting the jazz culture in Nigeria. It's not being picked up and pushed by the media. It's being done by individuals. It's being done in areas like Jazz Hall or Freedom Park or with the weekly jazz nights that we have. But there isn't a proper, there isn't an infrastructure that exists to support Nigerian and African jazz. And that's really what needs to change because until that happens, it's, it's really going to be, it's going to be uphill, but it's not, um, a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a task that must not be uh, uh, tackled. It has to be tackled because the quality of musicians that we have in Nigeria you know, from the jazz genre, I mean, the jazz genre is supporting the, the church circuits and is supporting uh, many other uh, music genres, even Afrobeats, jazz musicians, Nigerian jazz musicians are there supporting them, trying to make some contribution, hopefully trying to improve it so that it actually evolves uh, into something a bit better. And then we mustn't forget our own form of jazz, which I believe is high life. High life, I believe, is our jazz, because what's one of the principles of jazz is improvisation. High Life has always had improv by horn, by horn players, by saxophonists, by trumpeters, uh, by guitarists. There's always been improvisation in jazz. So that's what I believe. I've always believed High Life is our jazz. And as I said uh, a little bit earlier, as, as was said in the, in, in the introduction, one of the problems that African jazz has is that it, is, it has been pigeonholed with world music, in world music. And African jazz is not world music. World music is what you find when you go into some village in the middle of the Central African Republic and they're beating drums and hitting trees. That's world music as far as I'm concerned. But jazz, African jazz is a jazz genre. And the beauty of African jazz is that Unlike the jazz that you get in the US and Europe and the UK, jazz in every African country is different. And it's different because the musicians in those countries have taken their own culture and their own instruments and their scales, and they've merged it with the jazz idioms. And so the sound is different in each, in, in each country. I'll give you a perfect example. You have Hugh Masakela of Blessed Memory. Manu Dibango of Blessed Memory, Fela and Nicola Pukuti of Blessed Memory. All three of them were influenced by jazz. They came back to, to their respective countries and created three completely different sounds. But if you take Water No Gets Enemy, it is based on 12 bar. You can play a walking bass to, to Water No Gets Enemy. You'll sleep. So that's, that is why I think that jazz has to be recognized in Africa as a jazz genre. 
there's jazz in Egypt. If you listen to an Egyptian jazz musician, you will hear their own instruments, their own scales, but you will also hear the jazz idioms as well. So that's my take on African jazz. The media representation in the media is practically nil, and that has to be improved. There are individuals that are making row inroads. I mean, uh, uh, Jarman is one of those. This forum is one uh, one such. Freedom Park is, is is doing its best, but we, we haven't got any support. No support from television. No support from uh, 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 some from from, uh, from 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 radio. But there's no there's no there's nothing driving, nothing sponsoring, nothing pushing jazz in Nigeria and on the continent to the forefront, and that's what I think needs to needs to change. Um, and if one man like Pa Jimmy Sholanke can have the influence that he's had on Nigerian folklore and culture and and, uh, and 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 spoken word and everything, how difficult would it be, should it be, for the same thing to happen with jazz in Nigeria? And I think I have used up my 15 minutes. <laughs> I hope that is, I hope that is, uh, I hope that is my, um, uh, somebody's asking a question. Is jazz the music of the elites? No, it is not. Because it is, jazz is, it's for everyone. Not everyone understands the jazz idiom, but it is for everyone. If you, if you're interested and you take the trouble, you will get into it. Mr. Lee? Prof Lee, oh, what is it? Uh, somebody is asking. Was that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Ask the question. Yeah, take the question. What is the pathway? Somebody asked a question. What is the pathway? Let me see if I can. What is the pathway to get African jazz on the sponsorship radar? Should we be sponsoring an Afro and Niger jazz fund? No, I don't think. I don't think that's the way. I think what needs to happen. I mean, I'll give you an example. We have festivals like Runway Jazz and, and things like that every year. Runway Jazz has heavy support from Lagos State. Why does Runway Jazz always bring some American or UK artists to headline it? Why, doesn't, uh, uh, why don't they just showcase the best of jazz that we have in Nigeria on that show? Put some real money behind it and pay the artists commensurately for, for their participation. I mean, I remember in 2017, Najee was here, Yinka Davis was on the same bill. I don't know what they paid. I don't know what they paid uh, Najee, but I think they paid Yinka Davis a fraction of what they paid him. And yet she had to struggle to get it. Why? You know, we have um, Lagos Jazz Series by um, day two. The whole thing is no, almost no Nigerian jazz artists are showcased on Lagos Jazz Series. What needs to happen is that there needs to be an African jazz festival that is for African performers alone. You can invite the Herbie Hancocks and the George Bensons, they will be in the audience. But if that happens consistently over a few years, that is the sort of thing in Nigeria that will push jazz on the continent. We can invite other Afri musicians from other African countries. That is the sort of thing I think that will do that. Oh, Does that answer the question? Yeah, more than, more than those. And you've, and you've touched on a lot of- uh, can, I, can, I say, can I say something, please? Can I add sure. to this? Yeah. Please. Thank you very much, Egbon. Uh, whatever you say, I mean, is 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 very correct. You are, of course, you know how we started. Yes. You have yep. been you have been you have been at the forefront of promoting jazz music since when some of us were in in, in high school. So of <laughs> course, yes. Now. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Thank you. At I hear you. those days. Yes. Now my yes. contribution to that is that. I think it is high time that we jazz uh, players and, uh, and listeners, and, mm -hmm. and for, uh, I, I think it's high time we look outside 
Nigeria for sponsorship, for, for this funding. And, and it, it, it's a pity, even, even here in America, many, many jazz groups, many organizations, many promoters, they get funding. And this funding are global. Rockefeller Foundation, United Nations, and, and all, of, all, all, all of that, they have funding for all these things, for jazz education, for jazz performances, especially when, it's, when it is jazz. They have funding, but we, I, I'm sure we don't have the, the information in Nigeria. So we struggle. Like for example, Shadi. Shadi, we get a lot of funding to do, to do because, because they know that jazz is art music. It's not popular music. Popular music is, is, is when you have, I and mean, of course it is pop popular in principle, in practice and everything, where, where you put, for example, Whiskey in Nigeria, and you have 20,000 people, it's a failure. But when you have jazz concerts or, or, or jazz, jazz plays, and you have just, just 80 people, you say, oh, it's a box office. Too many, because it is not popular music. So the, 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 the outside world knows this. So that's, that, mm -hmm. that's why there are fundings. And I mm -hmm. think we should be able to access those fundings. We can't mm -hmm. do it alone. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much, Mr. Baxik. Um, Uncle Peter Fisher, the baseman, thank you very much. As usual, it's always enlightening to listen to you. And the most fun of it is that you walk your talk. Thank you very, very much. And we hope <laughs> thank you. you. The end thank of you, the Mr. Lee. Thank you very All much. All right, then. Yes, sir. Thanks also to Mr. Batik. The um, problem with when jazz people contribute is that they write a book with each contribution. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Batik. Um, rushing ahead, I'm glad that the next person is going to speak is the person who's going to speak based on your final, on, on Mr. Peter Fisher's final comments. The person speaking now is Ayola Shadare. We call him Shadi Baba. <laughs> Ayola Shadar, Shadar is the founder of founder and jazz and festival director of Nigeria's premier and most popular jazz festival, Lagos International Jazz Festival. He's also the CEO of Inspiro Productions Limited, which is a marketing media event and entertainment outfit that, organize, that organizes the festivals alongside other creative projects like Nai Jazz, the Nigerian Jazz Project, the Tale of Two African Cities, Totak. Bayelsa Jazz Festival, and the upcoming Global Afrobeats Culture Festival, GACFest, under their purview. As a sidebar, Ayola Shadare and his Lagos International Jazz Festival always invites Nigerian musicians, indigenous musicians. It gives them a stage, a platform to perform. So without further ado, we welcome you, Shadi Bobo, to this conference. Shadi Bobo, we can't. Sorry, Shadi, we can't hear you. Can you, can you hear me now? Yeah, I think okay. maybe you should try using the, your device's microphone inside of the hand frame. Can you hear me now? Loud and clear. Yeah. Can you hear me now? We are not hearing you anymore. Just static. Thank you. 
thank, thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Miss is Madam Ainke Martins. Yeah, next speaker is Madam Ainke Martins. Madam Ainke, yeah, we are going on to the next person. Um, is Madam Ainke Martins in the house? Is Madam Ike Martins in the house? Okay, um, Mr. J, are you ready? Because we are supposed to have a musical interlude. Okay, your system has been taken apart. All right then, um, I think we should throw it open. Who else is in the house? So who is willing to, to give their own talk right now? So sorry, can, can we can we have can we have question and answers based on uh, maybe one or two more based on this uh, submission by by the base man? Yeah, we're taking. Are there any other questions? Yes, okay. Mr. Batik, will you take your talk right now? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, all, all right, then give us. So can I can I go on? Yeah. Um, we have to we have to dial we have to dial you in. Um, so let's dial you in. Um, my next speaker is. Mr. Abiodun Benjamin Adebili, also known as Mr. Batik, with a strong church music background, classical music training, and a wealth of experience as a jazz improviser. Trumpet Abiodun is an artist worth listening to. From being just a choir boy, he became the assistant organist at St. Paul's Anglican Church, Yemetri Badon. He was graduate of music. Biodun later obtained a postgraduate diploma in journalism and a master's in communication studies. A scholar in trumpet from the Music Society of Nigeria, Muson, he learned to play trumpet as a member of the Boys Brigade and has since played in many venues and jazz sports in major cities of the continent. Biodun's trumpet can be heard on several recordings and television scores. At present, he lectures at the theater and music department of the Lagos State University. Um, I know Biodu is out of the country now, and you'll update us on what he's doing now. Um, perhaps what strikes one the most is the fact that he played, he was sleeping and working with fellow Nicola Kukuti. <laughs> as he said himself, I started as a self tutored trumpet player sometime around 1979. My quest for knowledge through consistent search for better players to learn from made me to become the most sought after player and virtually the best around. He has played all genres of music and in almost all the happening bands in Nigeria between the early 80s and the 90s. Um, my first contact with Biodun was when, as a member of the congregation in the Chapel of Resurrection University of Ibadan, was brought in to teach all of us the trumpets. And one of my greatest regrets in life is that I opted to chase women instead of <laughs> sitting under a stiff ledge. The other people in the church trumpet are playing well today, but I went the other direction. Biodun <laughs> Bate, it's, all, it's always a pleasure seeing you, listening to you, and learning at your face. So let's give a great round of applause for Biodun Bate. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lee Laye. And thank you for the beautiful things you said about me. Well, what actually brought me out of Nigeria was uh, my one year sabbatical uh, from Lagos State University to Mahido University in Thailand. As a visiting professor, I finished that and, and I got called up here in the US as an adjunct professor to two universities, which I am doing now. And of course, I started my band, Beyond and Batik here. So that is what I, I do now. And I need to say this uh, for the benefit of who cares to listen, that I, I resigned my 
I, I suspected, I, I resigned my appointment at, at Lagos State University starting from the 1st of June. So I'm not a staff of Lagos State University anymore. I live permanently in the US now. So thank you very much. And I, I want to thank uh, EA Jonathan, our coordinator at Lagos uh, Jazz Society. I'm so very happy that we have this society because some of us, time some of us as uh, Ayike Martins and uh, Ebon Peter Fisher, a few other people will remember. Those days we used to have a very vibrant uh, jazz club of Nigeria, like Chifemi Ashekun, Zilon Yea, uh, Atalade, uh, Uncle Wole, and Uncle Richard Bocknos, uh, and, and, and several other people. Then jazz actually had, had a, 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 a good mention in Nigeria. They did it to the point that universities were having jazz clubs, the jazz clubs of the yeah, University of Lagos, jazz club of, of UI, jazz club of Uniben, jazz club of University of Iloni, I remember vividly. Then we used to tour these places with Atalade's uh, jazz band, we used to play and, and uh, Remy Kabaka and Easy Kabaka brand. But well, I'm sure there'll be some other opportunity to, to talk about this, this later. A lot really happened those days and Eventually, the Jazz Club of Nigeria died. The Jazz Club of Nigeria died, unfortunately, and, and the, the, the club was in limbo. There were a lot of uh, 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 attempts at Ibadan to, to, to bring back uh, jazz music, and even in Lagos. But unfortunately, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, DJ, DJ track two, DJ track four guys came in and People were just, just started losing it until when a lady, the lady, our lady, EA, just came up and, and got all of us together. So thank you very much. And of course, I, I, I think it is important I, I mentioned this because Uncle Jimmy Sholanke, well, maybe not directly as, as, as like the, the, the other people I earlier mentioned, but not, not, not directly in the way that they, they, they took part in the jazz scene in Nigeria, but in his own unique way, which of course I'm going to discuss shortly, he contributed immensely to the growth of, of jazz. And of course, what we call rap music in Nigeria today, he was actually the very first person to do that. And, and I watched a, a, a documentary by Ayo Shunaya, which is the latest thing, uh, on, 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 on TV, on Netflix, right? I think it was just last week the thing was, was, was uh, put on Netflix, where he did a, the, the history of Afro beats, Afro pop Afro beats in Nigeria. And a person like Uncle Jimmy Shanker was not, was not mentioned because they did not know. The people like that, that uh, did their research and, and wrote papers on this, they did not know that. Uncle Jimmy Shanker was actually the very first person to do jazz, to do the rap music. But of course, that's not the focus. Now I'm just mentioning that. Now, and of course, I, 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 I praise the Lord for Uncle Jimmy. For I mean, in Nigeria, to, 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 to get to 60 is by a special grace of God. There are several, several, several ways of, of, of dying cheaply, of being frustrated, of being out of focus and all that. But here's a man who has been crisscrossing uh, Ife to every part of Nigeria and the world. And for once we never had that he was involved in an accident or anything or any serious uh, 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 health challenges. So I, uh, for, for him to have done that Thanksgiving in church and do, and then recorded that praise worship album, it's a very uh, a nice thing to give glory to God on that platform. So thank you very much, Uncle Jimmy, for, for remembering God in all this. And I wish you a very happy birthday. Now, the, the, the main theme for this, for this uh, uh, conference is uh, look at jobs in jazz, a dive into the works of Jimmy Solanke. And all of us that are speaking, we are making references to that, I mean, to the principal, to the person that, I mean, uh, is the focus, which is Jimmy Sholanke. Now, 
my own topic is uh, Jimmy Sri Lanka and the, and the making of African jazz. And in saying this, uh, first of all, I will want to, when we started LJS, I would say, yes, I was one of the people that, 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 uh, that, that were added when the, the group was started. One topic that we found very chaotic was defining jazz. What is jazz? And what I am not because even even in America here it's been very difficult to def to to define jazz. But I am going to say from from some of the experiences people have spoken with, my own experience as a player and few books that I've read, that jazz, though domiciled in the U.S. here, but two cultures contributed actively to making jazz, and that is the European. European contributed through, through the history of Western, Western music, which of course adequately placed jazz music as, as, a music, as, as an art form that belonged to the 20th century. The late 19th century, which is late romantic period, and then the early and the rest of 20th century up to the present 21st century that we are, Jazz has been taking different different forms, and so and one of these important forms is what we call African jazz. Now, African jazz that is to to further explain jazz. You know, I said jazz actually was contributed to by two actively by two cultures. I mentioned the European, the African part. The Africans contributed through rhythms and uh, spontaneity and, and percussions. And the, 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 where Uncle Jimmy Sholanke comes in there is the fact that jazz is, is based, predicated on improvisation. And of course, the idioms, which is the vehicle for driving jazz, language as a, as a cultural person, of course, he, he contributed, but I'm going to look at that at much, much later. Is anybody listening to me? I want to know that people are connecting. Are we here? We can hear you very well. Yes. yes. Oh, we did here, we follow you, we did. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now, I talk about improvisation, as, as one of the main thing that uh, one of the main things that Africans uh, uh, contributed, which is which is of course uh, opposed to the street forms of music of the of the of the European, of course. So, so people that study the, the the European music history, you know that when you are listening to classical music, you must define the form. It has either that either binary, ternary, rondo. Uh, uh, the theme and variations and, and, and several, several forms. But jazz is more fluid. Jazz is more fluid. Jazz is, is, is like, for example, if you go to a place like Muson, you see the orchestra playing. No matter how good you are, you cannot take your instrument from the crowd and go and join the orchestra, even if you know the music. It is that, it is that strict, it is that, that, that dogmatic. You can't just go, even if you know the song. They ask you to put off your phone. There's a particular way you dress, there's a way you sit down. And when they're doing a, a, a piece like a concerto, you don't clap. Even when you see the orchestra stopping and they're going to start, start the other one, you just see that they are rooted to the spot. You cannot clap until when the conductor practically conducts you to clap and then you have to clap like that. So it is so strict and, and dogmatic, but jazz is not like that. Jazz, no, no matter where you see the jazz band, if you see Dizzy Gillespie playing his trumpet, you could take your trumpet from the crowd and, and as you are coming, they will begin to clap for you. And then you are part of the, uh, uh, you are part of the, of the, of the performance. It happens everywhere. And a lot of stars, star artists were discovered. And of course we had Uncle, Uncle Jimmy Shulanke did this several, 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 several times. Now, Talking about Uncle Jimmy Sholanke and jazz music. 
Now, his first contact with jazz music was in 1977. And how I mentioned part of that uh, when I was talking about his contribution to rap music, which the, the rap historians, the Afrobeat music historians in, in Nigeria had never mentioned. Shortly after the after the first act, uh, first act 77, which of course he contributed as one of the assistant directors. Of course, he did a lot of, he was the one in charge of looking for artists all over Nigeria with so many other people that I don't want to mention their names because of time. Now, after his, his performance there, he got invited to the US by some promoters to come and, to come and perform. And while there, he got a, 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 an invitation by a group of musicians that they were doing a project by Ralph McDonald. Uh, uh, yes, Mac, Ralph McDonald, a percussion, percussion player, a, a very good, well-known jazz uh, percussionist, the, the, both American and, and Jamaican nationality. Now, they were doing this, this project in Los Angeles, and you could imagine the people that were there. David Sambo was on sax, Steve Gard was on drums, Idris Muhammad was on drums, the Breaker brothers, Michael Breaker was on trumpet, Randy Breaker was on, 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 on sax, Bob James was on piano. And funny enough, Bob, uh, Miriam Makeba and Huma Sekela, they were, they were chorus singers. Huma Sekela didn't play trumpet there. He was, he was invited as, he was in the project as a singer, as a chorus singer. And uh, Eric Gay was on guitar, and Grover Washington Jr. was on, on, on sax. These were the happening people in jazz those days. So Uncle Jimmy Shalanka was called up to come and do, they were looking for something African in order to, to, to solidify that belief, the notion that jazz actually, uh, actually came from Africa. So they were looking for somebody to do an introductory introduction to, to the music. And that is the path on Ola. And of course, some of, some of us, that knew about that project. We remember Onola Akweregede, Imoletan, and all, all, all that he did, which of course gave a lot of uh, quality to the music, to that music. That music remains one of the best to have come out of uh, even the USA as a jazz project. And that of course welcomed Uncle, Uncle Jimmy Sholanka into, into the world of, of, of jazz. And aside that, now one thing we must, we must know about jazz, as I said earlier on, about the fact that when a jazz band is playing, you can, I mean, if you are a good player, you could take your instrument on, on stage and, and play. Like for example, my brother that, that is here, Bright Gain, I mean, we'll, the, the, I've not seen any nation in the world where they will be playing any kind of jazz that, Bright Game will not carry his bass, whether electric bass or acoustic bass, will not go there, play, and is welcomed. Because just as forms that you must know. And that's one of the points I, I want to make. All of us, we talk about, we talk about African jazz. Jazz, I mean, with African idioms and all that. And even African instruments, as long as the word jazz is mentioned, Despite the fact that it is it is plastic, it is fluid, it has a lot of a lot of uh, freedom. There is still there are still some things, some knowledge that you must know. Even if you say you play African jazz, if you do not learn those those structures of jazz, if you don't like learn the harmonies, if you don't learn, learn its own form, if you are not not aware of those ones. If you go out of Nigeria, or even in Nigeria, if you play at some serious places, you will disgrace yourself. You are going to get there, they are playing 12 bar blues, you do not know where they are, you'll be lost, no matter how good you are as instrument players. And that is why I, I, I find it extremely funny that jazz has been one, one word that has been that, that that has been thrown around, especially by our millions of saxophone players in Nigeria. You see this one sax, this one, everybody has changed their surnames to. To sax, Tunde, Tunde sax, Kola sax. I even had uh, Isiaka sax sometimes ago, and I, I, and I nearly fainted with it. Jalili sax. You see, you see some of them, 
and even jazz, uh, secret, secret jazz. The, the jazz is, 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 is most, most exceedingly dis disrespected because, I mean, before you can call yourself a jazz musician, there are some things you know. Even if you say you know, you, 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 you are doing your own thing, that your thing you are doing has a foundation that you must, and I'm, I'm sure Bright Game will agree with me, that that education is very important and it's going to, it's going to dwell a lot more on that. Now, how does that relate to Uncle Jimmy Shulanke? Now, Uncle Jimmy, Jimmy Shulanke did Onola, did all of these, uh, all, all of these poetries and all that, in the but is very well schooled in the arts and, 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 and the, the real content of jazz. Like for example, uh, his record, one of his recordings, because I remember 1985 when I joined uh, the Afro Lins Jazz Ensemble in Ibadan. We did, uh, uh, the, the, the very first record that was given to me was uh, Luzan Strong and a few other ones. When we were playing it, the Bama mistakenly played Babagba by Uncle Jimmy Shulanke. Of course, I knew him before, I've, I've been hearing about him before then. And when I listened to the music, I had people that played, people like Ayo Vaughn on the bass, Udo Jim Udo, Tony Chiafo, and Solomu on guitar. These people were actually the musicians that were playing for Jazz Club of Nigeria. They were the ones that were, as at the time, the Jazz Club of Nigeria was, was touring about and, and few established musicians like Zilonia were not, I mean, everybody became, they were all band leaders. They couldn't, there was, there was a leadership uh, problem. I remember 1989 when, when they went to, when the Jazz Club of Nigeria went to Guyana for Guyana Jazz Festival then, where beside the Olugunde, Lagbaja was, there was one on the base then. When they were rehearsing at the National Theater, there was a very big fight because everybody there were band leader. Everybody there were, and everybody wanted to be seen with Dele Okonko on saxophone, with uh, Peter King on, 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 sax, on tenor sax too. The fight erupted and that, that thing nearly, nearly caused problems. Eventually, that fight that they avoided in Nigeria, when they got to Gu Guyana, they fought. They came back separately. They, they arrived separate, say, say, uh, different days. Now, this, say, uh, that was when the Navy band then, they were called the Wally Buckner Boys, the Navy Jazz Jazz Band then. They took over and they started backing jazz musicians and they backed Uncle Jimmy Shulanke. And I knew that uh, if you know these guys then, like Udo J. Udo on, on trombone and flute horn are your phone. If you don't know your onions as a jazz musician, these guys, <laughs> what do you want to do in their front? And of course, I must mention that uh, B.D. Wright was there too on guitar. Uh, the, the, the man that later became uh, Wura Fadaka. And of course, they, they respected Uncle Jimmy Shilake because he understood, he understands very well the, the, the forms of, of jazz. And again, I must mention, when Shadari Shadid is going to speak later, one of his jazz, international jazz festivals in, in Lagos, he, he invited Uncle Jimmy Sholanke. And the man, as, 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 a, as, as a, a, a very good jazz musician that he is, he just came to the place in his Agbada and he came, he didn't know what he was going to do. My band played, we finished playing, we were going to be ushered out of the stage. And he rushed down on the stage, said, no, Bati, please don't go, don't go. I want to jam with your band. And you could imagine a, a, a jazz festival of that magnitude. He came, he just he said, no, your band should. And he did fly me to the moon and feel other songs. And it was as if the band rehearsed for months. It was so perfectly done. So the point I'm trying to make is that Uncle Jimmy Sholanke actually understand the nitty gritty of jazz music. So when he's not talking about African, African jazz, he knows exactly what to do. And because I know, of course, my time, my time should be should be rounding up now. Now I want to, to mention one thing, which is a downside of, of, of jazz music in Africa, which of course is as as uh, Uncle Peter Peter Fisher said. 
He mentioned something about high life being jazz. I 100% and even more agree with him. Our high life music is jazz because if you, if, if you, if you watch the, if you listen to the chord progressions, the forms and all that, even the instrumentation, it is 100% jazz. And I have this impression, this belief, this opinion from my experience playing jazz, high life and traveling around that high life is actually a lower form. If jazz is seen as being difficult, high life is, is, the, is the easier uh, aspect of. So but you, you play basically chord one, five, chord one, four, five to play your high life. And, and of course, by the time you go to uh, three, six, two, five, one progression, which is seen as a very heavy thing, these are some of the basics of, of jazz music. And of course, fellow Nicola Pokuti delved into 12 bar blues, like Shelaro, where he did the correct jazz progression of 12 bar blues in high life music. Now, we, we, go, we, we go about and beginning to say that high life music is our music in Nigeria. To a greater extent, yes. But I would say that high life music, we cannot take it out of Nigeria here. <laughs> to America, to outside world, because by the time we play it here, people that know music will tell us that what we are playing is not high life, it's jazz. You play high life here in the US, they tell you you are playing rumba, you are playing, they will tell you what the name is. So you have not really correctly defined what high life is. We are just taking a bit here, a bit here, a bit, and we are calling it high life, and we sing in, 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 our, in, in our dialect. Now, this is why I will say that Uncle Jimmy Shalanke, having composed Onile Gogoro, that qualifies him as a jazz musician. That qualifies him as an African jazz composer. Because you can write out that music and give it to Kambasi Orchestra. You can write Onile Gogoro, Onile Gogoro out and give it to, to Munti Masali's. Uh, uh, Lincoln Jazz Orchestra here, they will play it. They will play it and Nigerians will recognize it as our, as our music and it's jazz. So that is, that is, uh, that is my, my the contribution. And I want to, I want to welcome a few questions. By, maybe there are things I need to explain again. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Batik. Because that is how you are known by most people. Because if you have questions, just send it via the chat and he will take them. Thank you very much. At least now, a lot of us have become enlightened about this definition of jazz. A lot of people you debate it every time. What is jazz? And everything you've said points to one thing. We have jazz, our own form of it. And um, we, all we need to do is to really own it and project it yes. properly. Thank yeah. you very much yeah. for this um, line of thinking. We, we welcome questions, but in the interim, we hope that um, Shadi Bobo is waiting and ready this time to deliver his paper without without any hitches this time. Hopefully, those demons in that in that microphone we come against them. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the absence of um, uh, questions, maybe we'll take um, Batik's question at the end of. Um, Charlie Bobo's um, paper. Should we do it that way? Yeah. Okay. Charlie Bobo to deliver his paper to us. Thank you very much, Mr. Batik. While um, we have um, Charlie Bobo come on. Thank you very much. Let's let's welcome him with a round of applause. 
yes, 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 you can, you can come on now. Yes, you can. I can hear you. Not very clearly, though. There's some kind of interference. I think it could be the um, earphone you're using. <laughs> so you were just. We can barely hear you. Yeah. Not at all. We still can't hear. Yeah, we can't hear you. I don't know um, whether we should go ahead with the next speaker. Even Miss Anike Martins is, is on hand to deliver her paper. This thing is not coming. I want to look at the program. Nobody's going to do this. Sure. 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 Yeah, if, you're, if you are here, please let us know where the chat. Oh, you're here. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Bright Dean. Thank I, you. Okay, in the absence of um, okay. Oh, hello. In the absence of um, Miss Ike Martins and Charlie Bobo's Mike Arsino, I think you should just go on to Mr. Bright Dean. Okay. Okay, so, so um, yeah, I'm ready to start. Like, yeah. uh, like Professor Lee. <laughs> okay, I can't, I can't hear you anymore. Do I have volume? Hello? Right, can you hear me? Okay, the, right. um, your voice is quite muddy. I can't hear you clearly. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? No, not, not clear. You, you are very yes, you are very clear, bright. You are very, very, okay. very clear. Yeah, I can, I can hear, hear you, you very well, Yodo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to see you and nice presentation. Thank you very much, okay. Bright. Thank you. I'm waiting for your presentation so I know you are going to give it to us. By God's okay. Bright, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I uh, I heard you a little bit. Okay, fainted, so but... I'll I'll get back to you. I'm still introducing you. You're not going to come in on song. Yeah. So I'll start again. With hundreds of compositions, more than seven albums, four books, and a collaborative album with legendary American jazz bass player David Frazen to his credits, jazz artist, composer, improviser, educator, bass player, motivator, and Christocentric thinker, Brad Game. Game is a master at his game. Brad Gain is the music director of the Society for the Performing Arts in Nigeria, SPAN, and the founding and present director of SPAN Academy of Jazz and Contemporary Music. An award-winning artist and unarguable, arguably Nigeria's number one jazz musician and educator, he is also the founder of Brad Gain Jazz Workshop and the African Jazz Camp, Camp co-founder of Afro, Afro Desi Music Limited. He has, he has facilitated music seminars at 
Shwani University of Technology School of Music, South Africa, and other countries. And he has worked with, worked with, produced, and collaborated with artists like legendary American jazz artist David Fresen, South African producer Victor Masundo, Greek guitarist Sotiris Papadoulos, and a host of others. He is an alumni of Jimmy Abbasol Jazz Workshop, University of Louisville, Kentucky, Dodon, Dodon Jazz School, France, Youth Jazz Works, New York, and a member of the Jazz Educators Network, an American based global network of music educators. He is married to Quinette Game and is blessed with three sons. Let's put our hands together for the maestro himself, Brian Game. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Lee, and uh, thank you to Edgeus for inviting me to speak. And it's a great privilege. I appreciate Peter Fida's presentation and, of course, Beauty Batik as well. And, Prof. Lee, when you were doing the introduction, honestly, my, my musical jazz mind was going through some chord changes. So I think you ended on a major seventh sharp level. Okay, so and I also want to wish uh, Baba Jimmy Sholanke a, a very blessed 80th birthday. I pray that God will continue to bless him and keep him on the right path to the end. So I just talked briefly, I think I, I have 14 minutes more on jazz education in Nigeria, the state of jazz education in Nigeria. It's sort of a misgrave for me. In one hand, I would say jazz education in Nigeria is abysmal. In another hand, I would say it's, it's growing. So abysmal in the sense that there are no much, much jazz, jazz schools. Then growing in the sense that there are a lot of young people all over this country who want to learn jazz. They want to better themselves musically, but they are constrained, constrained by money, or should I say it funding. So for us as a school, it's an NGO. So we're not charging much, we're just charging 50,000 for every three months. So 150 in a year, which is, really very small. But with that charges, most of the people want to learn to play this beautiful art form are not able to afford it. And that has really posed a lot of challenges. Many students come to our academy to study jazz music. And after some time, they can't afford it. And what we're charging is based on some of the scholarship that's given by the Chalaram group and other people who are contribute, contributing. So the major challenges I know that we're having in, in respect to jazz education in Nigeria is funding. Though we've tried to reach out to organizations in America, like the Jazz Educators Network that I'm a member of, to provide us support. They've done, they've indeed provided us support, but it wasn't in the form of finance, but in the form of sending educators. So there was a time we did an event, uh, we did a workshop. So they sent us two professors from that organization. So in a nutshell, really, without you know, wasting much time, we need funding to make jazz education work. We need local funding, and we need international funding. As an organization, we're in the process of uh, speaking with the Hebianko Institute of Jazz, which was formerly Theonilos Monk Institute of Jazz. They've collaborated with us before in developing our curriculum, and they've given us an opening to send students to that school. They offer 
masters in jazz, which is totally funded by them. But they have a very stringent criteria for taking students and we've not been able to send any student there yet except one but that student later chose to take um, to go to new york to study his masters so we're in the presence of discussing with them to see if we can assess the funding that is connected to the united nation so i would like to appeal in my presentation that the major issue for jazz education is funding and I like to appeal that LGS should, even if it's just two, just two, then they can sponsor in a year, please, they should do it. And the individuals that are here, if you can sponsor one or two students, it will go a long way to educating the boarding jazz artists. Because if we don't educate them, the major problem will be something that Batik highlighted, which is very important. They will prefix their names with jazz, but without the, without a clear understanding of the minimal structure, the idioms in the syncrasies and of jazz music, the basic articulation that stands as a springboard to performing. You can't really say you're playing jazz music if you do not understand the harmonies, the way the chord changes go, the harmonies that are functional and the harmonies that are non-functional, then you can't really perform. So my presentation is an appeal to everyone to please support jazz education. Sponsor one or two students. Our curriculum as part of the Academy of Jazz and Contemporary Music is authentically crafted to help the Nigerian jazz artists become a very good proficient musician, jazz artist. I think I've ended my presentation. Thank you very much. If there's any question, please, you can just ask me. Wow. <laughs> so this <is> laughing. <laughs> Bright dude. <laughs> and by the way, let, let me say something right now. Ayola Shadari has influenced jazz education. And that's, that's very important because when the, when the festivals are happening, many, many young musicians get to see how beautiful this music is and they yearn to study it. So kudos to you, Shadi, I swear. Jazz promoter extraordinaire. <laughs> you know, without wrong, go keep on fire. Okay, guys. Thank you very much, Prof. Lee, for the opportunity to speak. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad Gay. Um, there's a question, there's a question here that I've just come in. And okay. it says, what does it take to learn jazz or or music or, or a musical instrument? It takes passion to learn jazz plus more money in Nigeria. Passion to learn jazz for mm. big money in America. <laughs> and to learn an instrument, it, it, it takes passion and love for it. You know, there's one aspect of jazz that is mostly, you can't say it much. When you're actually playing jazz music, you're, you're actually expressing the full, the full, should I use the word capacity or idea of your trapatite person, your spirit, your soul, and your body, the, the whole faculty of the spirit, your faculty of the soul, and of course the faculties of the bodies that you use to do these things. So it's something that is really deep. Now, I also say that when many people come to our school to say they want to learn jazz music, they initially think of it like some very flippant thing that they just come, just play one or two things. But when we start going into the intricate details of bringing their personality 
into music, they now say, wow, that this is really serious thing. So passion is an entry point, probably. And uh, small money, like I said, in Nigeria. And we are willing to teach. <laughs> Thank you very Bright. much. Right. Can I just throw something at you, Bright? Okay. Right. Can I throw something at you? You know, yeah, you please. said something about yeah. you said something about how the musicians put sax at the end of their name. I Jazz. think I th okay. they put the sax, sax at the end of the yes, they put sax yeah. at the end of their name. Yeah. I want to take that what you just said one step further. Some of them, a lot of them, believe that once they learn to play the instruments they have reached their goal, the goal. Yeah. And I have a great issue with that because when they do that, all they want to do, all they want to do, they just want to sound like someone else. They want to sound like Dave Cause, they want to sound like Dave Sanborn, they want to sound like Kenny G or whoever. Do they but know these people? Do they know who but, the Sanborn is? No, no, do they no, they, they, don't, they <laughs> don't know, but they've heard them. So they aspire. Listen, almost they, every they sax guy. Karemu. They know my oh. Karemu. <laughs> no, that way. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. That you're get, you're getting to where I'm going. Um, yes. you're, doing, you're getting to where I'm going. They hear Dave Cause. Almost every sax guy in Nigeria wants to sound like Dave Cause or Kenny G, and they think that that is the that is what's going to get them to wherever they want to go. To become a true jazz artist. You have to go that step beyond and create your sound. The thing that makes you different, sound different, whether it's the way you run your scales, whether it's the way you put your melody together, whether it's your read control, something you need to create, go further and create your own sound, both on the instrument and in your music. Now, truly, it's not something that everybody can do. Everybody can't do it. But those who can, and some of them can, but they don't bother. They learn the instrument and they think that they are there. Your query, your 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 comment on that, Bright. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, so it's not uh, trying sounding like either foreign or local. I think just by 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 the way, side comments. Most of the most of the jazz sax player actually sound like Kula Jai. They want to redeem. <laughs> What I say, good thing or a bad thing, I'll leave that for now. But they, they say there's an, a jazz learning system that was uh, propounded by Clattery, the great jazz singer and trumpet player. It's called Imitate, Assimilate, and Innovate. Jazz music itself, obviously, I have to start from imitation. So the problem would be what type of imitation? Is it a poor imitation or a really good imitation of that object of desire? But when you stop at imitation, you lose your authentic self, your authentic musical self. So you need to move a step further to innovation. But innovation doesn't necessarily come from imitation. There's something in between. And that is assimilation, which has to do with the clear understanding of what you imitated, and which empowers you to innovate. And that's where the education comes in. For the Nigerian- Brad, yeah. I want to say something. I want to say something briefly. I don't know, okay. maybe now when you finish. Okay. Which, which, is, which is, of course, what is the the foundational problem. And I'm sure I'm happy that uh, Mr. T. Mark is here. What the problem is, is the Nigeria situation. When just started in Nigeria, I mean, the one that I know popularized by Tunde Kuboye those days, it, it survived because it was at Ikoyi, where we had embassies, where it was the, 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 the Nigerian capital then, Jordan Barracks was there, all those military men were there. Sam Evin Brown, that was the, the uh, UK, uh, uh, the British uh, High Commissioner, was with us playing saxophone then. P 
People, all those super rich will leave their places, their house, houses, they drive two, three minutes to Ikoya and listen to jazz. If it had been at Musi, then it would have failed. That's number one. I mentioned uh, uh, Mr. T Mark, Dr. T Mark. Why? Because he is one of those people that genuinely wanted to promote jazz in Nigeria, also classical music. He genuinely wanted to promote jazz, but he was frustrated. You and I were members of that band in the year 2001, 2002, where he had the best. Nathaniel Bassi was on trumpet. I was on flute down. Sax T was on the tenor sax. You were on bass. Agbo, Agbo, he got the best in Nigeria then to play, but he was spending over 300,000 Naira per year then. And T Mark then will pay for 10 years as a head. 3 million, 5 million ahead for 10 years, I'll pay everybody. But when shows come, we'll be paid 400, 500,000 Naira to play show. And we say, look, this couldn't even, couldn't even, even run my years out. So that frustration, of course, made a lot of people to forget. And you see, big band was important to jazz, even to our life, the Wuru dance band, all those, all those, all those that that's band in, in the, even even the, in, in the, our our own uh, uh, the just the high life missions here. Initially, they were big bands. Even fella who can afford to run such anymore, but these are guys that by the time they play, uh, they learn to play one key and they can play birthday shout out. They are making money. That they are they're surviving. So I think that is I think that is what the problem is. People don't want to learn what is correct. People don't want to sweat to practice for six hours a day and then do, do, don't make money doing it. Yeah. yeah um, thank you very much, Latik. I know I should have been interjecting when the answer is speaking, but we have to move on. Does um, Bright Green want to round up and say anything? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll just yeah. round up based on. Based on some of the comments that have been put in the comment section, and uh, Saliko Babalola, I see you there. And I'm gonna say something. I, I watched the, I watched the bio. Should I say the biopic or the biography? The the movie by Tunde Kilani on Ayinla. You know, the beauty the, the, the um, highlight something when he was speaking, the, the hybrid foundation of jazz music. So there are two aspects of it, the African percussion, forward motion rhythm, polyrhythm, color response, and all the things that African bring, the very, the, the soul, the liveliness that comes from it, which is, which is the real deal for jazz music. But it's not the only thing that is there. There's also the harmonic foundation of poor, which was borrowed from Europe. So, Lekor, you're right. There's a cultural sensitivity to jazz music, which is African. And I dare say the Yoruba rhythmic development, you know, which is very, it's, it's to me, it's totally understudied. And it's a huge day. I've met a lot of professors in New York who go to Ife to study the, the rhythmic, should I say, in the syncrasies, the articulations there. So we, <clears throat> the Yoruba, the, the, the Africanness of jazz, it's not being eroded at all. But when I'm talking about how, what Peter brought out, learning an instrument is one thing. Learning an instrument very well is another thing. Mediocrity in learning playing an instrument is awful. And someone highlighted that recently in Algiers when they posted the video of the young lady who played who played saxophone. And it, it made reference to a lot of people who just make sure, make their faces look like they're playing something great, but they're not play well. So we'll talk about instruments, but instrumental capacity development. And we're talking of the development of the music, which has that tripartite part of it, rhythm, melody, harmony. When you learn this in very ways, you can express yourself 
your, your authentic musical self in any form or genre you so choose to. If you want to express it in the, the opera music of the rural people, quite well do it. Improvisation, a lot of things is there. But for the jazz education, the people need to learn it very well. And for them to learn it very well, there's poverty in the land, most of them can afford it. So we need funding, funding plus many funding, just as it's done in America. And it will, it will help us to get there for the benefit of everyone. Thank you, Prof. Lee. And happy birthday again, sir. Jimmy Shulake, yes. happy birthday to you, sir. God bless you, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, the iconic bright That's game. <laughs> um, at this point, I'm going to bring in T Mac next. But before that, I would like to announce to all of us with lots of delight that we have in our midst, remotely watching and listening and smiling. Hey, my bad by himself. <laughs> Happy birthday, sir. <laughs> Oh, we can't we can't hear him. Mm. Maybe it's muted. Maybe it's muted. Mm. Maybe it's muted. Mm. Yes, we can we can't hear him. No, we can bring him back. Oh yeah, we can hear you now, sir. Okay. You should, they should, hello. I can hear you now. You can hear us now? Yes, we can hear you. I can yeah. hear your voice, yeah. Good evening, great minds right. of jazz. Good, Good evening, sir. You very much for this special gathering on virtual beverage. I am humbled. Thank you very much. It's great to God be with you. And happy birthday to uh, happy birthday to you, sir. Thank you very much. This Biodu Biodu trumpeter. This Biodu. Ah. D Baba Batik Batik Baba me. Eh ma question was that? Batik Eh ma question was that? Amen. Yes sir. Amen. Yes sir. Amen. Happy birthday sir. Yes sir. Hey, Mark, how are you birthday. doing? How is everybody doing? Hey, I'm fine. Happy birthday sir. Thank you. Fuck, I see you. I see you too, sir. I see you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, when we we are talking about jazz in those days, uh, my I drop my heart and I respect uh, a lot of us from Baba Sid Moss, Wale, Wale, Wale. Uh, uh, I am not an old school because I'm still presently here with you to do a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So have a good evening. We have joined you now. I want to know and hear more about what we are 
dealing with jazz in Nigeria. T Mark, I'm sorry to disturb you. We have just been allowed to come online. So I'm here with you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes, good evening, my colleagues, my friends. My name is Tima Komashala Easily. My congratulations to my friend, Jimmy Sholanke. You may not know, but um, I've been a friend to Jimmy Sholanke since 1970 or 71. I returned to Nigeria after having finished my education in 1970. And um, I would say these were the heydays of bands, of music, of jazz. Immediately after the war, it was like a boom. Um, I performed with my band T Mac and Afro Collection at a place called Batakoto on Broad Street. And it was a center of music, of culture. I don't think the young musicians will ever imagine what we had in those days. Let me tell you, Batakoto had a restaurant, it had a club, on the left side, a boutique, and there was the most beautiful girl in Nigeria who managed the boutique. She became the Erelewu Dosumu. But the club itself was a melting pot. In my band, let me quick mention the musicians because Jimmy knows them all. There was Johnny Astrop, Berkeley Jones, Lalo Atkins, Tunde Kuboye on the bass, the Licha Du Sisters backup singers, Steve Black, Friday Pozo. And um, every Friday, musicians would join us for a jam session. Fella would come with his saxophone. It was something special. Now, let me tell you the kind of guests we had. Fernandez would park his chains and car and come and listen. Um, even Abiola, who had his office not far away, ITT was just around the corner. Um, it was just something else. It was like us young people. Jimmy Jolanke at that time was. I think 26 or 28. I was 22 and he's six years older. And he would come and recite. He would come and sing. He would come and dance. He would give us stories, Yoruba stories. Unfortunately, in those days, we did not have cameras on our phones. Unfortunately, we did not film and record what we did in those days. And that is a pity. The only guy who came and filmed was a guy called Ginger Baker, who was the drummer of Cream. He came to Nigeria. He came through the Sahara Desert. He filmed Ginger Baker's safari. And one of the episodes was filmed at the Batakoto. Um, you can see everybody. He cut me a little bit out. I am only there for a few seconds because I was Oibo T-Mac and he didn't want that white competition. I'm not white, but uh, he looked at me sometimes like, oh, I am not um, a real black musician. But let me go to my main theme, which I have to discuss, education. I left in uh, late 72 when Ginger Baker signed on my whole band behind my back. Only Steve Black refused. And um, he went with them abroad. I was annoyed. I somehow dashed my instruments away and went to the UK briefly to John Ginger Johnson and his African drummers. And from there, I went to Switzerland to form a band called United. We had um, one year of rehearsals. Polydor gave me a contract to do an album. Uh, we were very well rehearsed. We had 10 days studio time left. So Kunze, my producer, said, let's do something, kiss. Kiss means keep it simple, stupid. Anyway, we did some light entertainment music, which came out immediately after my album, and um, that became a big hit. Uh, we named the production after my flute silver convention. Anyway, I traveled around the world for two years. We made a lot of money. I came back for Festac 77 to Nigeria, and I looked around. 
And I said to myself, what we need in Nigeria is education, music education, because I was blessed that my family sent me back to Switzerland after my father was assassinated in Nigeria. He was a Swiss ambassador. My mother was a Shakiri princess. And I put money into a club called Sulere Night Club. It was an open air club. It was kind of not very nice. So I air conditioned it. I covered the roof, bought first class equipment and had my second band called Kimak United, which had also good musicians like Kenneth or Kolulo. Um, many of them are still around. One Saturday night, I saw a white man in the crowd. Somebody reported to me, oh, we had a full house. There's even a Rolls Royce outside. I said, oh, great. So the white man came to the stage and said, uh, please, Mr. T Mac, can I join in one number? I said, of course. What do you play? He said, keyboard. So he came on stage and played brilliantly. I thought maybe the guy works for Julius Berger or I don't know who. So after the, after the show, he said, Tima, would you come tomorrow Sunday to my house, bring a difficult food concerto, I'm a good side reader, now let's play a Sunday afternoon after the meal. I said, okay, fine, I, I'll teach you. And I took the B minor suite from ba of Bach with me, which had that fantastic, so I went to that house in Victoria Island, I think it was Queensway, big house, I saw him at the door, and I said, yeah, Mervyn, who are you? He said, oh, I'm the British High Commissioner. We played together, and it was a big success, and there became a relationship with Larson for many years. We played a couple of concerts together at the Metropolitan to raise money for music schools, etc. But the main thing was my godfather, Akintola Williams, um, uh, Sir Mervyn uh, Brown, and myself, we formed the Classical Music Society, which was the foundation for Muson. I was a little bit around the um, generals in those days because they loved my music, they would hire me and so on. And Babangida said to me, what can I do for the industry? I said, we need to build music schools. Um, Piman uh, just started in those years. So he gave land in Onika near the stadium. It was a big piece of land, which was called the Love Garden, where People just at night walking up and down, smoking ham, taking their girlfriends there. And that was the land for the Muson Center. I put, a, I put in a half a million dollars to start it off. We built the walls, we, we cleaned the grass. And um, then I said to Akintola Williams, we need a lot of money. So we went to Shell, we went to Ajib. Shell gave us $10 million. Ajib gave $10 million. Babangida put in $10 million because remember in those days, $1 was like one naira. So we had the capital to start. Then I had an idea. I said, look, out of experience, it will not be easy to finance a music school because who is interested to put money in? Let it be a successful non-profit making organization. Let's have office facilities there for a bank. Let's have a restaurant. Let's have a multi-purpose hall. So that's how we had the Ajit Hall as a concert hall. We had the Shell Hall as a multi-purpose hall, La Scala restaurant, and one of the banks there. And um, it made money because the bank paid every month. Um, the um, Shell Hall at the moment costs over two million a day. And um, we brought in the London School of Music because I said, music has actually only one way to be taught and it has gone through centuries and it's called the classical system. At that time, I was not very much into jazz. I was more playing Afro pop, my classical stuff, but I knew that the foundation of music education is the classical way. So we made an agreement with the London School of Music. We got the curriculum. We brought in teachers to start off. And I'm talking about now, uh, that's about 40 years ago. 
Yesterday, no, uh, two days ago was the graduation day again of a two years course um, at Tumuson. And I am very, very proud to say that every year Muson puts out high quality professional musicians who thereafter go into production, into jazz, they go into teaching, they perform in churches, they have their bands because they have the basics of education. But I agree with Bright Gain, who is my best friend for since 1970. I think we performed the, the Clinton Gala night together already. And Batik, I appreciate all of you because you are teaching jazz. Um, Bright Gain and Span, Society of Performing Arts, they have a jazz school. They bring out brilliant musicians every year. Because to lift up the bar, in Nigeria, we need educated musicians. We don't need those uh, Skelewu musicians who don't even know what key they are singing. They don't even know um, the basics, the rudiment of compositions. Their song is just one way, no beginning, no middle, no end. It's just there. So the more music schools we have in Nigeria, the higher the bar will become and the better we can compete uh, who compete against the well-educated musicians around the world. We have lecturers coming in. They are amazed about the quality of musicians and talents. But when they look a little bit into the light entertainment, what's going on, the list of the radio, they are amazed that a lot of musicians get away with nothing. I mean, we have had hundreds of one-day flies, they have a little hit, tomorrow forgotten. They cannot sustain it because they do not have the education to actually convince people abroad that they are on the same level. The brain is the brain, the talent is the talent, but what we need to do, form those brains and talents into professionals who can compete, who can do tours abroad, where people listen and say, wow, so you in Nigeria have this kind of quality musicians, this kind of songs coming out. But again, again as Bright Gain rightly said, we need money. Now I'd like to leak you a secret, which unfortunately is still a secret, but should be out more in the news. Um, during Festag, the government decreed that the funding of education and arts is actually tax deductible. That means if you give SPAN or the Muson Center or uh, the Peter, what, the gentleman in Badagri is called Peter, he plays saxophone and flute. Uh, if you give his school money, it's tax deductible. You can actually up to 10% of your pre-tax giveaway. We're you talking about Peter King. Yes, yes, Peter King. Okay. Up to 10% of your pre-tax income you can give away and deduct from your tax. Imagine if MTN, no, MTN does it. They co-sponsor the students for the Muson school and they write it off as tax. But let's say if um, an oil company who makes 10 billion profit a year takes 1 billion and puts into the endowment of the arts, they can write it off tax. So they don't lose, but they don't seem to know. I am at the moment um, talking to um, an organization called Temple, I recorded last week, Thursday, Friday, in the fantastic studio in o Ogidi Studios, and I found that it's owned by um, uh, Folavio, Folavio, Tunde Folavio, who I am somehow in my oil business, I'm involved with. I'm having a meeting with them on Thursday, where I'll make a proposal, use that tight tax write-off situation not just have a fantastic studio. If anyone of, of you have seen the studio in VI, it is like Abbey Road or Marcus Studio London or like um, Lion Share and Beverly Boulevard, LA. It is first class, two big studios. 
film studios, everything is there, but they don't have many people coming to record because it's expensive. All the good things are expensive. So back to Bright Kane's statement, we need money. We need to convince corporate bodies. We need to convince rich individuals because we can't count on the government. Unfortunately, the government seems not to show much interest at the moment into um, the arts. But the private sector should put in more funding so that even young artists who have a good song, who have a good band, have the opportunity to record in a first-class studio so that the product is first-class and the world market will accept it. We need everybody to support jazz because to me, jazz is life composition. When I play with a jazz band together and then I get my spot to improvise, what am I doing? I have the chords in my head. I create in my brain a melody which is instant composition, which is called improvisation. Under the classical musicians, very few can actually improvise. Uh, my teacher, Jean-Pierre Rompal, the best and most famous flute player, found it difficult to improvise. So he wrote down at the end of certain pieces where you had to improvise and studied it and played it. Because in classical music, we are so concentrating on interpreting somebody's music who has written it two, three hundred years ago, that you forget that you can constantly create. In jazz music, it's different. It is lively, it's modern, it is creative music every night. I don't think a jazz band will play every night the same thing as a philharmonic orchestra on tour does. So to me, I have jazz at my heart. And Jimmy Sholanke, I have seen him improvising in countless events. I remember, I think it was the year before the last election, when we had a birthday party for um, Orlando Julius in a club near Baleva Square. You remember, Jimmy, um, Jimmy, we had a jazz night. It was lively, it was fantastic. Orlando performed, I just joined with my flute. And there walked in a candidate, a candidate of APC who became our governor then, and the uh, not Fashola, uh, Shaunolu. And he addressed the people and said, oh, I see T-Mac here. T-Mac, you don't remember. When you lived in Bode Thomas in 1971, was it? No, 1977, 76, 77. I lived two houses away from you. I was a 13-year-old boy, and I used to come and listen to you rehearsing when you worked at home. And you would send your house boy, give a soft drink, some biscuit. You didn't say, go away, go away. T-Mac, because of you, I love music. So we have to approach the Lagos State government with our proposals because our governor loves music. He will support music. If, he, if we put forward a proposal which makes sense, he will look at it. Just before the pandemic, uh, there was an event at City Hall, which he sponsored. And um, there was jazz, there was high life, there was uh, even Ebenezer Obey performed. So, Go to those governors who love music. Go to those senators who love music and say, we are not beggars, but we need your support. Because unfortunately, live shows do not pay as they used to pay in the 70s. So if you want to have a good show where we have good equipment, a nice air-conditioned hall, we need support. We may, make, we may have an income on the gate, but it is better to have upfront the money for the show, so the show be not a flop. We need money to promote the show, to invite television stations, to invite journalists, so that everybody knows what's happening. We have to videotape the show for prosperity, so we have it on tape, and that all costs money. So I think I close. If I have any questions, uh, please go ahead.
Thank you very much, T-Mac. Um, thank you for honoring us despite the short notice and how we went to town with your name without even telling you. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I will check the chat and see if, I'll see if there's any question for you. Um, someone said, what is the fate of the average Nigerian university music graduates? Okay, good question. Uh, la last year, I lectured, I, I lectured at um, the University of Nuzuka for three days. I was doing Philharmonic composition. And then I always do a few hours where I tell musicians, number one, live healthy, rest before a show, try and be without stress before going on stage, the basic of a professional musician. And then always comes the question, what are we going to do when we finish our education? By the way, I was also with Batik at uh, Lasso last year. I think I had about two hours. I was lecturing and playing and talking. So um, I always say, a good musician does not suffer because there are a lot of people out there who hear when you are good and it's convincingly good, they will engage you. They will sponsor you. It is musicians have nothing to offer. They run up and down the street trying to make a little bit of money. A good musician will be picked up either by a first class school or he can do online teaching. I had um, a guitarist who worked for me for many years, Philip Uzo, in the studio last Friday, and he does online teaching. He has lectures at the Muson, uh, top secondary school in Victoria Island and so on. They bring him in to teach guitar. A good musician, I don't think can suffer because your skill, your convincingly good will make people to hire you. Of course, every beginning is difficult. Jimmy Sholanke remembers when you were in Batakoto, I think, Uncle B was his name, who actually owned the club. Uh, let us have of the income. Everyone earned about 10 pounds a week, which in those days was good money. Today, you may think it's no money, but 10 pounds sterling in those days was good money. And we were able to pay our bills, our transport and live OK. It was not the, the big money, you know. Today, young musicians can make big money on ringtone if people like their scale or whatever. But honest money is earned with sweat. But after some years, because you need a couple of years to become good, when you finish music school, university, you have learned your instrument or your voice has been trained. But then come the next 10 years where you become a master or you achieve to become a master. It takes 10, 20, 30 years. At my age, I still play the flute every day, one or two hours, because you never stop playing. Thank you very much, sir. That was very well said. A round of applause for c -Mac. Thank you. Yeah, keep fit, get well quick. Thank you. I'm a little bit All down right. with typhoid and malaria. That's why I couldn't come down to ECOE, but I, I'm okay. I had my injections oh, yeah. today. Thank you. Yeah, you're so nice. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Can I, can I make a contribution, please? Is, is, is there time? So, moving on. Um, so, sorry, there's no time, Mr. B. Go ahead, no go, ahead, go, ahead um, go ahead. Someone was always had their hands up. Son has had a hand up. Oh, he actually comes the beautiful, delectable Ritty Bakare. Um, Ritty Bakare, you have the stage. You want to say something to us? Well, I didn't have my hands up. I was I joined to listen, and then I got a message saying I'm um I'm a panelist. How could I say no to LJS? <laughs> so I'm a bit of an accidental panelist. Can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. I don't care. Yes, I yeah, can hear you. So, um, but of, okay, and um, I'll take the opportunity to say happy birthday, ATS, which is something I don't even know if I will read, let alone half of 
Nigeria. So big happy birthday to um, Uncle Jimmy Sholanke. Uh, it's really been an honor. I've followed um, a few of the events virtually, and I'm hoping to have you on my show. I believe Taiwo is with you, and I've spoken to Taiwo. So I look forward to having you as, um, as a guest on Listed Legotion, where we can talk for two, three hours as long as you want, actually. So um, I think this is about what is jazz. We're always discussing that on LJS. And um, I laugh because we never agree. And I guess we're never going to agree. And why should we? Because when you have a form of music that's so uh, multi-layered. So when I think of jazz today, as you were all talking, I thought to myself, well, what is jazz? And here we are celebrating a living legend like Jimmy Sholanke. Jazz is Jimmy Sholanke. Jimmy Sholanke as a dramatist, as an actor, as a folklorist, as a poet, and as a playwright. That is jazz. Jazz is that expression that doesn't get funneled into anywhere. It actually belongs to each person. So every time we discuss where's jazz, I heard, um, brightly talk about um, teaching music, et cetera, et cetera. And I kept reading the comments. And I don't believe anybody, everybody who can play a piece of jazz instrument is a jazz musician. I believe each one of us live jazz because if jazz is drama, if jazz is life, then yeah, we all live on watch. And somebody, somebody wrote on the comments and said, stop talking jive, jazz is a way of life. I totally agree. But again, we can't funnel it. And that's where we always kind of lock heads. We mustn't funnel it into one pigeonhole. Um, one of the things that's happened with jazz, in my opinion, and I'm not an expert, and honestly, I, I invite others as many as possible. Some of my, my senior experts, or should I say, those that I admire, look up to, love, Biodo, Papa P, I see you. Um, my dear brother from the UK, Leko, I know you're there. German, all of you EA. So, you know, you're welcome to correct me. But if I may say, here's the thing. Jazz has been adopted by the elites because it was adopted by the whites, because it was taken away by those who originally created it which are the Creole, who if you step back, where people were slaves from Africa, who went, who were taken to Haiti, Haiti, who ended up in the US. So if you look at jazz in that form, as a resistance music, okay, music that protested against all sorts of oppression, be it, you know, just for being human and being of a different color, being of a different race, being of a different language, of a different culture. That's what jazz represented back then. And then as it continued to develop, as often these things does, it's then hijacked, and I will use the word hijacked, and turned into classical music. And you know, it, it becomes purified. And so that's where we also get the fight. We get the fight between the jazz purists and the non-purist, if you like. Those that feel that we should allow jazz to breathe and to evolve and to shape as it feels, really. Um, you know, because culture evolves. So why do we believe that jazz must stay in a particular square or of a particular shape? Whilst I respect, of course, there's the science, there's the composition, there's the, you know, if you like, the, the sort of noted alphabet, as I call it all of that of jazz. But at the same time, when I think of a jazz of a Lake of Babalola, which comes from Lagos Island, it's quite different from the jazz that I hear from a Biodun, but they complement each other because they speak to me, not just as a black woman, not just as a Nigerian, but also as a Yoruba woman. And then when I look at the jazz of, of um, what's his name, somebody very young, a Femi layer, and Femi takes it, and Femi is, Femi is taking it to a place where art would be, currently exists. 
because family layer being young is very much influenced by Afrobeat, but is also influenced by rock. Being a guitarist, he can't get away from that, but he also loves jazz. So that's the thing. For, for the, part of the problems we have is for as long as we continue to insist that jazz has got to be a particular way, that jazz has to shape and feel and look and sound like a way, it's not going to move forward. Which brings me on to the next part. Why is jazz in Nigeria not getting sponsorship? Why is it not getting you know, mass appeal? Um, um, you know, why is it not on TV? Why is it not the music of the streets? So here's something. Right now, we all know what we're going through in Nigeria. Actually, the fever that's enveloped us. We're only allowed to discuss it on LGS on a Monday. That's politics. Right now, we are in the political fever. Whether we like it or not, whether you're into politics or you're not, it's going to shape your life. Well, here's the thing. I've seen lots of jingles, lots of jingles, also, but I haven't seen any. That's a jazz jingle that's about the people, that speaks for the people, that speaks for this, this euphoria and this envelope and overwhelming feeling of change that's been demanded by the people. So if jazz is the music of the people that came from the Creole who are resistant, et cetera, et cetera, oppression, why do we not have, since Fela or, you know, yes, you have the heavy wings, Biodu and all of you will tell me, but I'm talking about now, right now, for the first time in Nigeria, in about what, eight years, we have an incumbent that's leaving. But even more so is for the first time in Nigeria, we truly have the majority of the populace wanting to take part, especially the young people. So we want just to, to have mass appeal. 30%, 33%, 15 to 35, own Nigeria. If you extend it further to those who can't even buy music, you're, you're looking at like 60%. So why isn't jazz being used as a way to speak to them whilst I appreciate those who are teaching it? Bright again said a lot of things. And one of the things he said that stuck with me was how not everybody can afford to, you know, jazz is expensive. Or should I, and I think when you, when you say learning music is expensive, but guess what? I want to play the piano. I'm never gonna be a jazz pianist, but the day I master that piano and my brother Batik is playing, I'm gonna beg him to get on that keyboard and do whatever it is that my spirit feels. And that's why, that's why we have to be careful because if the young in my soul, if the young in my soul wants to be part of my brother Biodu playing, and I just wanna, you know what? I've learned, Papa P has taught me how to play, how to play the keyboards. I can now play it, even though I can only play two, you know, two pieces of music, I should be able to. But that's how you invite people in. Every time we look at jazz as a purest form of music, we lose people. We over intellectualize it and we've got to stop intellectualizing something that came from Roth. It actually came from Roth. Did they have a form of writing it down? It was white people that started to write music. We, us, Bawala, I play music. Go, go, somebody take back, back. This one, go, go, ataka, papa. And that's it. So let's move away from that purist form. And when I think of the likes of Jimmy Shalanke and his contemporaries, and T Mac, and you know, uh, uh, um, I've forgotten on Putunde Kubwe, and all those other people, I don't think of them as purists because they were always non conformist. And I'm not even going to talk about Fela because that's a given. So how about we stop being non-conformist when it comes to jazz and start being real rebels because jazz was the music of rebellion. That's what I gotta say. Thank you. Thank you.
Mm, to the points and fire brand, as always. Thank you very much, <laughs> Richie Bakari. Um, moving on, we finally we have Madam Ayike Martins in the house now. She's coming on next. Um, Madam Ayike Martins, I asked her to introduce you, as she said, singer, songwriter, producer, renowned queen of jazz and African jazz. Oh, lad, mine. She's been everywhere. She's rubbed shoulders with her Bianca, Hancock, the great Nina Simone. Anybody can think of. She has albums out to to her on, to her to her to her credits. You may think she sounds like Ella at times. Yeah, in her voice, you hear the heaving sadness of of Billy Holiday. But all those she distills into her own distinct, unmistakable style. So I give to you Madam Anike Martins, and she's going to speak about the jazz scenes in Nigeria. Let's welcome Madam Anike Martins. Hello, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Madam. Good evening, folks, family. Um, it's so lovely to be on, you know, to be on this panel, and I really had a good time listening to Ireti. She almost covered all of my points, but I hope I have one or two things to uh, contribute to this to this discourse. Um, jazz has been a part of you know my life from the time that I was born because both my parents were very much into music, you know, and my my great grandfather actually played the, the played the um, the the what do you call it the the this is a, the big piano, what do we call it? I think I'm getting old. Um, played the grand piano. And um, I'm, I'm from a family where a lot of us are in music in one way or the other. Um, sorry, you might not be able to see me properly because I don't have any electricity today. It's been raining. So I just had to find a position near a door so that you'll be able to at least, you know, see a shadow of me or something. Um, I remember growing up, you know, listening to records, you know, Oscar Peterson, um, uh, 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 Louis Armstrong, and a few, and a few other, you know, people, um, uh, Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughan, and so on. And I really, I really imbibed all that because along with those, uh, uh, along with those musicians, I was also um, listening to my parents' high life records and um, listening to listening to uh, people like Funshua Deolu and so on. You know all those old songs, Yawok Pankeke, Agboju Logun, all that. And it really it really affected me uh, growing up. From Adiolu uh, Akisoya, yes, yes, yes. You know, Amba you Pukpao, know, uh, Tunde Nightingale, uh, Bobby Benson. I had a chance to sneak off with some adults to go and watch Bobby Benson at the at, at his place on the Korodu Road, and so on. I listened to um, music of Rex Lawson. Um, you know, is it Willie Payne? Uh, it's it's quite it's quite a lot, you know. But over the years, you know, I found myself drawn to um, the, 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 the core jazz artists. And then um, even in Lagos, we had various places. We had places like Batakoto, you know, where, where musicians were performing in those days. We had, uh, um, you know, all these, all these clubs, uh, uh, Bobby's, Bobby's Place, you know, people were performing and it, it's, I was very young then, you know, I was a young girl. I remember meeting uh, Remika Baka, Remika Booz in the UTC cafeteria, you know, and that was one of the jazz, the, the great jazz artists, you know. Oh, yes, oh, yes, so new men. Oh, yes, so new men. I would have been, you know, like, um, like a jailbait to him because he was, he was closer to my cousin, you know, Lola Fanikayode, who, who was also, who also played great piano. She was the granddaughter of uh, Pa Crepi. And I'm sure if Biodu Batik is on here, he, he, will, he will remember Pa Crepi of those days. 
And um, it went on, you know, the, there was a jazz scene in Lagos. Um, I'm going to zoom forward now because we had the, we had the 60s, the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, all the people, um, uh, Femi Asheku, uh, 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 Chief Okupe, th there were quite a lot of them. Um, uh, this, this gentleman, Ata Lade and Co, who, who held up the torch for jazz in Lagos and in fact in Nigeria, you know, it, I don't know who, which of us cannot remember. It's a lovely way, you know, with Art Alade singing on, on NTA. Anyway, moving forward, you know, I was, I, I was a student. I found myself gravitating more towards the, 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 the left of music rather than the right. That is jazz music, Afrobeat, and so on. And I can never ever forget being in boarding school in, in, in Ibadan and having, we all, we had this uh, Rediffusion radio in the corridor and Fela boomed out of there. Okay, I'd heard Fela uh, play his high life in the, in, in, in this, you know, late sixties and so on. But the first day I heard Jeon Koku, I was like, oh my God, what is this? I didn't want to go back into my dormitory. I, I, I was just standing there gobsmacked. And I will be, I will, I'm proud to say that I was one of the girls who, when we went for um, dances with our, count, our male counterparts, uh, Government College Ibadan, we, a lot of girls would say, mm, I don't dance fella when they were asked, you know, the usual excuse me dance thing. But I would be, I would be the first person to get up and rock my fella, rock Ekoile, uh, uh, um, Jean Koku, all those, all those records. Well, in those days, jazz in Lagos was rather interesting. We had people like T Mac. I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward now to the late 70s. We had people like T-Mac uh, playing his flute and so on and his band. And um, I, I belong to like an Afro rock band and we used to open up for T-Mac at Suru Larry Night Club in the 70s. And T-Mac would come on, he had this um, kind of, he had a midget who was, who was his uh, 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 congaist. And for some Kintago. reason, he fancied Kintago. me. So I, <laughs> I used to spend Kintango. time running away. Ireti, <laughs> I see you. I used to spend time trying to avoid the midget because he always, I don't know why. I used to think, why does he come after me? I'm like twice his, uh, his height, you know? But obviously, you know, it may, maybe it was the artistry or something. But I used to, I used to sing uh, lead with uh, a band called Grotto, you know, which included uh, Martin Aminici, the late uh, Toma Mason, who was a bass guitarist and later on became an excellent jazz drummer. And then we move forward through the 70s into the 80s. And in the 80s, you know, we'd all finished college and all of that, and we reconvened. I'm talking about people like uh, uh, Jumoke Fashola, I'm talking about Peter Fisher, um, uh, uh, quite a, a few other people. I remember once Chris Okotier and his girlfriend rocking in to, to grace us, you know, on the, on the stage. And then I met the Kuboyes. And the Kuboyes were the ones who kept the jazz scene in Nigeria really moving. Um, Fran Kuboye was a mentor of mine. She was, <laughs> Fran Kuboye was a mentor of mine and uh, Tunde Kuboye too. And I was, I, 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 I'm naturally quite a shy person. I've got two sides to me. And they used to push me out on stage to perform with uh, Toma and, you know, we had a lot of other people that passed through there. You know, uh, the great Boye uh, Gadelaja would come in. Um, Peter Fisher would rock in. Bayou Adekpetun and Co. Um, this uh, uh, <laughs> Pego. Okay, Pe you've got it, Pego. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Bayou Adekpetun and Co. And um, Sumi Smart Coal. Sumi Smart Coal. Sumi Smart Coal. There's nobody, there's nobody in jazz that did not come to jazz 38. But I'll yeah. tell you something that's, uh, sorry, that did not come to the museum kitchen in those days. 
And I'll tell you, when we moved from the museum kitchen to Jazz 38, 38 Awolowo Road, um, we had we had uh, uh, so many people come in. You know, I remember the late uh, Egom. I, I can't remember his 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 uh, last name. And when Fela came out of prison, he's the first place that he performed, other than um, Sunsplash at uh, Tafar Balewa Square was at Jazz 38. And he I was came there that and night. he did I not perform. Night. Yes, you were there. He did not perform one Afro, one Afro beat. He performed Bye Bye Blackbird, Summertime, yes. you know, all the, all the jazz grace. And we were just amazed. And I remember Egom standing up because he, 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 Bella was yabbing as usual, yabbies. And Egom stood up and he was like, wow, that he, he, was, he was listening to Fella talk and he wanted to hear the, and he was like, Fella, 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 come Fella. And we all burst out laughing. Well, the Kuboyes kept everything going amazingly. They were, they were such an encouraging, sorry? Did somebody say something? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, right. The Koboyes kept jazz in Lagos going. At the same time, we had people like uh, Majek in Iaba, who opened Jazzville. And Jazzville, you know, we used to trot off to uh, my great friend, uh, Sotiris Papadopoulos, you know, yeah. uh, my honorary Nigerian friend. He forced me to learn how to sing Spain. And I was like, oh God, this is a mouthful. And he said, you have to learn it. You have to sing it. And I'm, I'm very happy today that I did that. Um, beyond that, we also, we were just moving around. We went all the way to, um, uh, 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 this Pintos. is before, before no, be, even before Pintos, Lagbaja was there. Bread and butter. Not Lagbaja, um, bread and butter. Bread and butter, yeah. Bread and butter on, on yeah. Allen Avenue. Yeah. And what, what, Allen Avenue or Kwebi? Okwebi Road, yes. Yeah. Okwebi Road. And um, that was a blast. I remember the late uh, May Ellen Ezekiel and uh, her husband, me, Muf, me, Muf, me uh, sorry, uh, Mofed Richard. Yes, Richard. Richard. <laughs> Coming in and um, there, there were so many people used to come. You know, the funny thing about the jazz scene is that even the expatriate community will follow it anywhere. If it's in Najegule, they will be there. Yeah. You see that you see them come in convoy. Something similar, I'm I'm going to digress, but something similar is happening right now because um um what's this young man's name? Uh, 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 Etuk. Etuk is drawing people to his venue, the truth, on Akerele. And even the expatriates come in droves. Every now and then I walk in just to see what he's up to because Etuk is one of those of today that, you know, I, I, I call them the, the movers and the shakers. I, I remember um, a few years ago going to watch Etuk. I've watched him about four or five times uh, perform in London. And a chap sat beside me and he said, listen, I thought I was coming to see a jazz show. He said, this guy's a hurricane. So from that day, I started calling Etuk a hurricane. But OK, I'm going to go back again into uh, the 70s, the 80s. And we had, you know, we, as we had, as I said, we had the Kuboyes. Unfortunately, Fran died and, you know, we, we, we performed at her, at, her, um, at her funeral, you know, at her lying in state. And it was so sad, you know, but may her good soul rest in peace because that was one generous singer. She never thought, sat me down to teach me how to sing or anything like that because our voices were pretty similar. But what she did do was to uh, give me sheets of sheets of music and she pushed me on, you know, she gave me a platform and she was always so happy. Fran would even ask me that, won't, why won't I spend the night in their house, you know, and I was like, oh, I've got to go home, you know. But from, from there, the scene moves towards, you know, the Victoria Island area. And we had places like Kay's Place. Kay's Place, you know, uh, which was being run by Kamal Bustani. And 
we had so many uh, performers come in there, including the late Ejiro Ometan, uh, Papa yeah. Jared, Papa Bex, uh, yeah. Demola Adegu, um, um, Mike, Mike, uh, oof, I've forgotten his name because I'm always mixing him, but he was our drummer, but he's now a bassist and he's in, based in South Africa. Anybody can remind me, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm getting on a bit, you know, but then- Mike, Mike Berry. Mike Berry, yeah. Mike Berry, yeah. Berry, an excellent drummer who became an excellent um, bass he guitarist. He played yes, the drum yes. for me. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Anyway, Mike was Mike was there. Look, there are so many people that one could could name. I remember uh, we mustn't leave out uh, Peter Peter King, who set up you know a, a great music school in Lagos. <laughs> Thank you, Kechi. A great music school in Lagos, and that school, I think, is still striving till today. You know, yeah. uh, Remy. Um, in those days, in 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 Pintos and all that, there's Gloria. There was uh, Gloria. You know, who is uh, who is our, our chief on the on the uh, LJS now? We had um, uh, Yinka Davies. Yinka was performing, and I must tell you that Yinka uh, till today remains the powerhouse that she has always been, you know, through everything, through adversity, through accident, through whatever, she is a trooper. She's someone that I admire and love greatly. Then I remember, you know, Ayo Bankole Tundi Aji Jedidu of Digitrack Studios. Because that is how I, I, I met Inka at Digitrack Studios when she was with the um, Zap, the, a, a squad they called the Zap Squad, you know. Um, I must say something that in those days, Pintos, because somebody just put a note, the former governor of Lagos State, uh, Raji Pashola, used to come to Pintos. He just used to sit there quietly and he just used to sit there quietly and listen, you know, to the music and enjoy it, you know. So he was one of the people that came, you know. And um, we had Tunde, Ma we had Tunde Martins, uh, Frank Martin. Tunde Martins is in America now, I think. Um, Frank Martins. We had Big Joe, Big Joe, very big guy on saxophone. He, he was yeah. with the extended family band you know and so many you know so 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 many others um i i am so proud of all these people some are gone some are still alive and, nikki um, art gallery I, was there too nikki art gallery who? nikki art gallery was there oh nikki, 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 nikki art gallery came up later yeah came up Just later yes uh, just yeah, Nick Nick Art Gallery came up later. She was a dancer know? there. Yeah, please go. Yes, go on. Yes. She was a she dancer was. with us then. She was. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um. There there were so many venues, but I don't want to talk the whole night. But I want to come to what is happening today because it's it's like jazz. You know, jazz does not die. Jazz does not die. Somebody will always pick up the baton somewhere. And um, in the in the in the last few years, when things became a bit quiet, you know, um, Jazzville was no longer there. Bread of bread and butter not operating. Um, Jazz thirty eight long gone, and so on. Mr. Peter Fisher, by your adequation, and Mr. Light Awukoya decided to start a jazz event in. Uh, Victoria Island, and that jazz event is still holding now. And you all need to see the level of musicmanship that we have coming in there. You know, these these young guys are guys that if you don't move, they're going to mow you down. You know, you realize that they they are also well trained. You know, I remember years ago sitting in on a project in 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 LA and. I could see that every single person had their sheets and their, their music sheets and they were calling out keys or whatever. And me, I was just like, oh my God, these people are so fantastic. But today we have musicians that are flying the flag for Nigeria. And 
they perform every week. They perform at um, um, uh, uh, Scotch Bonnet. They perform at uh, Mo's place. Uh, can somebody give me the name, please? <laughs> um, uh, does anyone, can anyone give me the name, please? Sorry. Oh, yes, that is. There was Art Cafe. And I have a long list of people. I have a long list of people who were playing, you know, jazz, you know, not only Tunde, uh, Ayobankole, Bwega, Yelaja, Sotiris, Peter Fisher, Yinka, Gloria, Gideo, Midiron, Dak Bodino, uh, Tunde Sole, the late Tunde Sole, amazing guy. We did many gigs together. Sammy Okozo was on the jazz scene, hard, you know. Um, um, it, it, was just, it was just amazing. Today, today we have all the young artists coming in, um, performing beautifully, flying the flag for jazz in Nigeria. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm having a maybe I'm having an, an ancient day, but but uh, we have people. Maya, who is Maya Nawaya? <laughs> I remember, I must mention Maya. Now she, she now goes by the name of Mayan. Maya was a pro prolific jazz singer that has now moved to Europe. And um, she was amazing. She was also on, on, the, on the London scene. And then Ayo Bankole's wife as well. Um, can somebody rem remind me? She also was an amazing, an amazing singer. Um, Silo, Silo Bankole. Silo. 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 I cannot forget Silo. We had, we, we had quite, a, quite a lot of them. Um, I'm trying to see if I have a, uh -huh, if I have a list. Today, we have great Silo Bankole, fantastic. We have great people. We have Wale Adeyemi, oh my God. An amazing drummer. Yamaha, Yamaha. Uh, uh, endorsed artists. We have Victor Ademo Fair. Victor will blow anybody off the stage anywhere in the world. We have Adejeji Adetayo. We he he is amazing. We have I will Elijah. Clear. I will clear. Oh, I'm coming I'm there. I'm coming there. We have Elijah Alebo. We have the Clegg brothers. The we have the Clegg brothers. We have heavy wind. Oh, thank you, Aki. We have heavy wind. I went to watch heavy wind, you know, a few years ago at Freedom Park. Ooh, he did not disappoint, you know. Um, he did not disappoint. We have people like Ego Obaro, who are still pulling things on. Wale Jesse Tobi, Mike Idowu, Stanley Ohios, Taiwo Clegg going on, uh, Femi Leye. Ah, my goodness. I don't know if Ia is on at the moment, but Ia was the one who turned me on to Femi Leye. And if Ia has a has um, a chance to 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 watch any artist in the world, I think she will always go for Femi Leye first. You know, bias. Okay, folks. There's so many other people I could name: Fumi Olajo Egbe, Jesse Bidu, Shalom Bankole, Quite, Quite. Shegwatoye B, Dayo Femi Toy, Niyi Ige, BJ Sachs, Jerry Omole, Dede Mabiaku. Dede, Dede was there in those days at Bread oh. and Butter, Motherland. And Dede was a jazz artist before he even went off to, 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 to do uh, Afrobeat. And Dede is still a jazz artist any day. If you, if you get him to do a standard, you will be amazed. We have Fibian, who is taking no prisoners. We have Phil Uzo, great guitarist. We have all the Badebo brothers, Mike and his brothers, Femi Slice, Johnson Adenuga, Amaka, Maka, Victor Detende, uh, Sheung on horns, Adek Bolahon. Look, I could, I could say so much. But thank you so much for listening to me here. You know, I, I actually thought it was tomorrow <laughs> and I thought I had the luxury of time, but thank God for Mr. Lee who pulled me out, you know? And Bisade um, Ologude is a name that we cannot 
we cannot discount because that is one of the guys that kept jazz running. There is no gig that is performed today that you will not hear them playing one of his songs. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have other times. I'm a talkative once I get going, you know, Mr. Lee will tell you that I was like, eh, today? But I quickly put on my glad rags and I came to the window. Here's the window here. <laughs> I came to the window so I'd be able to communicate with you. So love you all and looking forward to seeing you all again. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Madam Maike. I was going to mention that, that I spoke to you earlier on and you were like, 15 minutes is too long. What can I say for 15 <laughs> minutes? I don't tell you how long you've spent. <laughs> hanging there just a minute. Biodun, are you there? Just hanging. Biodun, are you there? I am here. Biodun, that's it. I'm here, yes. Biodun? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, you are you at home, right? What happens of your premises? Jazz I am here. This Montenegro. Madam, Madam, my is going to sing something, one bar of something. I'm going to accompany her on your flugel or a trumpet with a mute. No, pro no right problem. No problem. On the spot, do it. <laughs> All right, Madam, my are you still there? I'm still here. What do you play, Madam, my I'm here. Anything, start something, you have to accompany it. A highlight track. Anyone that comes to your mind. Highlight. Yes, just sing something. Oni moi moi. My God. Madam Enke. Madam Enke, are you there? She's frozen. She seems frozen. Yeah. 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 frozen. Yeah? Yeah? Yes, I'm here. You want to play happy birthday? You want to play happy birthday for Uncle? Oh yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah. I'll do that. Let's play happy birthday. Let us do it in the jazz. Go ahead. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Mr. B. So um, we have Shadi Bobo on now. We've, we've introduced you Can three you times me? already. Your, your name is dancing <laughs> in our heads. So Shadi, Shadi Bobo. <laughs> okay. Go ahead uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, everybody. Baba, Baba. Um, I'm My earliest, I mean, young, young, young. I never knew that I would have this opportunity to kind of, can you, can, can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you loud and clear. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yes, I never knew that loud and clear. as a kid, I would have this opportunity to, um, in one way, be associated with someone like you, uh, because, you know, on Nigerian TV, it's not as democratized as it is now. You are up there and we were here. So thank you. Uh, I also want to use this time to congratulate you on your eight years. I want to my eight and more. Um, I also want to thank you for honoring us at the Lagos International Jazz Festival. 
I don't have that kind of history. So I'm talking from a layman's point of view, perhaps. Never had that opportunity to maybe go for Jazz 38 or Jazzville. I think I was still so, so young. You know, but thank you for coming for the 2014 um, Lagos International Jazz Festival uh, for your support then. And when we had the radio program, we had the Nigeria Jazz program on iGroove. We also had the Jazz Africa program where we played African jazz. And we had the Nigeria Jazz program where we played um, Nigerian jazz musicians. So I'm talking of jazz in the present tense. And I was talking to German and Mr. Lee that, what am I going to say? Perhaps I'll just quickly talk about my experience because I see that there's a group of people who have rocked this jazz scene and I've just kind of come in somehow, but maybe because of my passion and the influence of jazz that my dad had upon me. My influence of jazz was from my father, my late father, Dr. Martin Sabimbala Shadari. But he also sponsored two bands in, in Lagos where he bought musical equipment for them. And, you know, and he really, so we had musicians in my house at every point in time. So he would come from his surgery and he will interact with musicians, whether they were juju musicians or, or jazz musicians or, or high life, it didn't matter. They would just all come. And one person that uh, regals me about stories about that is Uncle Ben Sinodonigi, who tells me that, oh, your dad was my friend. I used to come to him, I used to listen. Because I was a kid, five, seven, 10, you know. And so I want to thank you for, for your impact uh, on the scene, not only just the jazz scene you know, or the folklore or the high life, but your impact uh, with your storytelling with somebody we looked onto. And you are, even for 80, you look incredibly young, sir. And I'm not just them um, hyping you. So, as you go. Um, jazz in the present tense. I want to say this because during the course, and I'm glad maybe I've had the chance to listen to quite a few people, but um, in 2005, Batik would know uh, with, um, H with HKA, when um, Tony Rappel started the, the church then, and then we used to have gospel jazz and build a Batik, HKA, you know, we used to have jazz sessions that would come for a launch vet fellowship. And believe me, the praise and worship there was a jazz session. The jazz. Oh, where's session. this? Yes. <laughs> where's yeah, the It was a jazz jam session. Yeah, it was a jazz jam session. And you know, HK will come from Ibadan, be automatic, and, and would do all that. But let me just say this um, as um, to, to put stick. Since 2005, when we went to the Cape Town International Jazz Festival to try and see whether we could bring a festival like that to, Na to Nigeria, we didn't for about two, three years, we're just preparing until 2008, when we happened to have a venue, um, Studio 868 in Abuja and I'll tell you that since 2008, my company, by God's grace, Inspiro, has always held a festival in Nigeria till date. A round of applause for me, please. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I want to, uh, because it seemed as if others had come and gone. 2008, we had the Lagos International Jazz Festival. Now, for four or five years, we didn't have that festival. But we, we in Spiro, organized the Muson Jazz Festival. And I remember when we were organizing the Muson Jazz Festival, we were, in Spiro was one pushing for more Nigerian musicians to be on board. Yeah. Uh, Biodua, yes. Biodua and I, yes, Biodua and I were members of the Festival Planning Committee from about, um, was it 2009 to about 2014. And for five yeah. years, we pushed that Nigerian musicians should be, and that's when Muson would bring, um, a big name from abroad and maybe one Nigerian artist. But yeah. in those periods, we had to make sure that people like Mike Eberi, whom you called, Bright Jane, Sax T, all yeah. of them, they it's came and they Kirk. performed on the news on stage. Yes, am, am I making, yeah, you know, they did the Imole, Imole Ayobalo Guan is guys that have native band now. And then in 2014, we had an opportunity also uh, 2013 to do the Bielsa International Jazz Festival. They wanted to do a jazz night. They approached us. We told them that there was no need to do a, a, a jazz night. Make it an international jazz festival. Make it a tourism and arts and culture thing. Do you understand? So you could bring tourists in. And well, that was funded, properly funded. And from then, we now revived the Lagos International Jazz Festival again. And it's only last year that we have not been able to 
This year we had it even in two venues. It was the um, pandemic that did not allow us to do it in 20, 2020. In fact, in 2020, we were going to call the Lagos International Jazz Festival, the Lagos International Afrobeats and Fuji Festival. Because in 2017, we bought, yes, two Fuji musicians <laughs> at 50-50 jazz. We bought Mal Malaika and Obese, and people were like, ah, how could you bring those kind of, but hey, we felt that one thing jazz does is that there's always a tension between jazz and commercial music. Uh, 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 as, an, as, uh, as a commercial musical art form. But you know, jazz can absorb and you know, you can transform diverse forms of music. That's why from the, I'm not trying to educate them, but from the, you know, 20th century till now, jazz has evolved, you know, from big band, bebop, you know, cool jazz, hard bop, modal jazz, jazz rock, smooth jazz, to what we have now, you know, the influences that we have now. And there's a funny thing, um, um, Uncle Ben Sinidoni J, who is one who is a hardcore jazz critic. And, you know, he would criticize jazz. I remember when he came for the jazz festival in 2008, you know, it was like a great show with a few, few flat notes. He would tell you as it is. And he used to talk about, you know, all this current Afro beats music or Afro fusion music being like disposable pangolo music. But one day he calls me and says, Ayola, you're going to do something. I know you do the dance festival, but my son plays this music. <laughs> I started laughing. I said, look, your son plays this music, this Afro beats music that you're one person that has kind of made critiques or, or, or not really, you know, because we have jazz Puritans who believe that jazz is this. But I believe that over the years, jazz has evolved from the great masters, from the Coltrane's, you know, the Charles, Charlie Parkers to the Louis Armstrongs who are the father of jazz, Duke Ellington's, to even the current American jazz musicians, the Greg Reporters, Terence Blanchard, Esperalda, Spalding, and all that. And also has been influenced by other cultures. Do you understand? The, the music has allowed itself to be influenced so that even today you have Cuban jazz, you have Latin jazz, the um, Danilo Perez, and um, Roberto, the other guy, Arturo Sandoz, they are making, they are making any sense. So in its present form, but there's one thing I've noticed in doing, in, in producing jazz festivals in the last maybe 14, 15 years. And Bright Gain and I normally have that. I say, Bright, money no day jazz. <laughs> in Nigeria. And he says, Shadi, there's money in jazz. Uh, but you don't do this, you don't do that. I said, ja, there's no real money in jazz. I've not really made the kind of money. But I didn't really go into jazz because of the money. It was because of the love, because of the passion. Uh, a few days ago, some young cat from Ibado came to stay with me, and he's a drummer, Michael uh, Lugbenga. And he got me into jazz conversations till late in the night that I had to go and bring out all my old CDs, at Barclays, Coltrane's, my kind of blue, and the effect it had on us and how we used to play that music in the office then, um, and, and, and the calming effect that the music has. So when you say jazz in the present tense, yes, we know the music has the past, which I don't need to educate people about, about its origin, um, from coming from West Africa, the West African influences, the Black American singing, to its present day. Now, are people listening to jazz? Yes. We thank God for some stations about smooth FM, classic. You know, I used to say that jazz used to be relegated to the, what we call the graveyard shift. In those days, we'd go to smooth. Butterfly, Ben Ophelia would play jazz on radio, but it used to be on Sunday night between 10 and 12 at reading 93.7 by the beachfront. So it's either you went there for a pre-recording or you went there and you slept there and you left on Monday morning or somehow you braved it out of, of Lecky to come. Or, but you know, a few years after that, people started playing it on radio stations. Smooth FM came, they had the luxury concert, which I believe was a jazz concert. They bought jazz artists, they bought Gerald Albright, um, they bought Richard Bona, Mike Stern and a few of all those other guys. And yes, they had their own foreign artists who they like to bring, but we also being part of that, we tell them to 
Think about the Nigerian musician. Think about the Nigerian artist. Think about putting them on the same bill as your international artists, because those international artists, the amount of money they were they were uh, um, 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 charging. I remember for Bielsa, the money was paid to El Club, but it didn't get to his account early enough, and by contract, he didn't land. But Huber Sakela was there, so. Uh, jazz in the present tense, is there a future in jazz? Bright has said something about we need money. But I, I, you know, uh, was it George Gersh, uh, Gershwin that said life is like jazz, is best when you improvise. I think that jazz in the present tense and where it's going, the, the, the jazz musicians and people who provide, they need to, again, improvise. They need to, um, Leko Babalala made a few comments um back during this uh, the course of this um discussion that why are we not ex exploring our own art forms our own native music yes high life is there but why are we not infusing sakara and akbala because i believe that when you listen to south africans play jazz like Yuma sakala abdullah ibrahim uh, miriam makeba uh, jonas guangas and the rest of them you hear that distinct South African sound. Yes, it's good to know the jazz standards. Um, jazz is about improvisation, syncopation, and you know the rhythms and all that, but it's also nice to infuse your culture, if I'm making any sense, uh, into the music. Now, I'll, I'll bring it to the current Afrobeats guys. Believe me, the Afrobeats guys and, um, well, there's this contention, is should it be called Afrobeats? If Ella owned Afrobeats, um, he's the inventor of that, and we give him all the kudos and putting the S behind. But if you listen to their music, they've been able to also fuse, or should I say sample, a lot of the classics into their music in terms of horn sessions, horn arrangements. Sorry, I'm talking like a layman or a producer or a promoter, not a real educator like them, Brightwood. But they've been able to infuse that. I remember that for Dino in Nigeria then, we used to try and get those musicians to play with the hip hop boys. And whenever we got them on stage, and these guys or the whiz kids and Code David, when they saw the amount of practice and dedication that went into doing, look, jazz is, that is a jazz musician, a real jazz musician is a complete musician. There's nobody he can't or they can't play with. Do you understand? There's nobody that they cannot get on that thing and listen to the music and quote and unquote. I suppose that's what jam sessions are, are, are about. So a jazz musician is a complete musician. Jazz to survive in Nigeria, I'll, I'll tell you this, the amounts they give one of these popular musicians who just came out, and I don't knock them, would do my jazz festival sometimes if we cut it to budget. And I'll be honest with you, where they come, where one of them will tell you is collecting 50 million, 75 million. Do you understand? So I, I think we could seek collaborations, so to speak. Some will say, no, don't seek those collaborations. But those guys are getting paid. Do you understand? We're not going to compromise the music. I believe even uh, Peter Fisher, or Peter said it, he says the Nigerian jazz musicians are the ones that are the uh, bedrock for popular music because this is where all the musicians are. If you notice all these Afrobeat guys, now, they don't want to play track one, track two, track three. They want to play with musicians and the musicians who can easily get their music, quickly score it and play along with them are mostly jazz musicians. So uh, I, I think over the years, as the music goes, we need to begin to encourage what I would call Nigers, or some people have already termed it, but it's our own Nigerian brand of jazz that infuses high life, Sakara. You know, a few boys now, they play that, they have the gong gong there, they're introducing African instruments, rather than just even calling it Afro jazz. It's been Nigers. So is there a future for the music? Yes. Um, there's, a, there's a distinction I'll tell people between jazz as a genre of music and jazz festivals. Let me explain that. 
jazz festivals, I, I noticed something about jazz festivals, like in Europe, you, you find out that a lot of American jazz musicians go to Europe to gig because you have festivals in almost, like this is summer period now, you have festivals in almost all, all the countries in, 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 in Europe, you know, in Spain, in, 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 in France, like our, our partners, we've got some new partners in Germany, in Stuttgart, they called um, Jazz Open. So I had to ask Jorgen, the, the founder, he said, Ayola, well, we call it Jazz Open because we've got about 50 to 60% jazz content and the remaining, we open it for all other genres of music so that we can attract other people into the festivals and coming into the festivals that are like three or four stages, they encounter maybe the musician that they wanted to hear, maybe plays rock and go to another stage and they encounter jazz. Um, and, and so I think jazz in its present form in Nigeria, yes, we say it needs to be encouraged, but more work needs to be done. Um, I would say we don't have a jazz culture. The, uh, like South Africa has a jazz culture. So a lot of us are pushing, you know, really like someone said one time, so you put jazz on steroids in Nigeria here. Yeah. You understand? It's not really your popular music, but we can find ways to collaborate. I'll find ways to, um, how many minutes do I have more? I don't want to spend a little time uh, to- Yeah, it's time to, to start rounding up. Mix with them. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, like some says about today's jazz musicians, they play traditional jazz, they play contemporary jazz, and they play mainstream or anything goes. So jazz has influenced other genres. It's still influencing a jazz musician who learns a, a, a young guy. There's still young people playing jazz who are going to things like Span Academy of Jazz and Contemporary Music, going to Peter King um, School of Music in Badagri, going to Akakpo, Emmanuel Akakpo's 10 strings, where apart from other genres of music, jazz is being taught and they're coming out. And you know, there's packaging of the musician. I have to give it to Etu Kubom playing his kind of music, he calls it F music, I think, and he plays the trumpet. <laughs> and he tells you that, yes, and, 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 and he is packaging himself. You know, so apart from just playing the music, there's also the packaging, there's also the trying to get the music out there, promoting it, um, trying to get the, yes, we are going to package ourselves and put the, the, the try and get the, the corporates too, but the corporates too must see that they're not just handing you money. Many times when we went there, they will tell you they're not just handing you money. What value are you bringing to, to the music? So um, I think I just want to, yeah, Balamila, somebody said, I just want to kind of round up here that jazz still has a future, but there has to be a reinvention, so to speak. Uh, it is fused, it has evolved, and there's still more work to do. Finally, we're, we're, I just want to say that announcing that even our, we as a company in Spiro, we've decided that this year we're having an Afrobeats festival. We're calling it, having the GAC festival, the Global Afrobeats Culture Festival, which jazz musicians are going to be part of. You know, and, and, and that's it. So happy birthday, uncle. And thank you for having us, Lagos Jazz Society. God bless you. We will ask you questions, you can go. <laughs> no, I don't want to go. I just want to. <laughs> I, can I, can I, I say something, say... please? Okay. Can I say something, please? Yeah. Thank you so very much, Ayo Shadi. I am, I am a member of the planning committee. And when we were thinking of what the topic to give you, we all agreed that it is better to give you this. I mean, there are a lot of other areas you, or, or you can as well handle as much as perfectly as you did this, but you dealt with this perfectly well. And what informed was giving us, give you that, that uh, topic was the fact that when we talk about jazz, and this is my contribution to your presentation, when we talk about jazz concerts, when we talk about jazz festivals in Nigeria, we get it wrong. Okay. We used to get it wrong. Why? Because jazz is not just straight ahead, uh, blues, bebop, no, 
Jazz can be anything. Yeah. I remember there was a concert we did, and some people came to me and said, Can you imagine my boy? He said, The jazz all up, I want food. And so, what's wrong with it? And this is where I agree totally with uh, Egbon, Lekon Babalola. When you talk about jazz, that's why when some of our jazz artists in Nigeria, when they're invited to jazz festivals, when they, when they say they're going to play abroad, they apply jazz festivals. Femi is, is, is currently on tour in Europe and, and the US. Yeah. 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 By, uh, Papa uh, of Blessed Memory, Victor Olaya, all of them, whenever they mm -hmm. came to play, even Wasiu, Kwan Wan, when they come abroad to perform, they play at jazz festivals. Because jazz, as like mm -hmm. Peter, Peter, the official said, jazz is about improvisation. Yes. It is you that is straight jacketing it. You are, you are the one profiling it as it must have bass guitar, it must have double bass. They must be able to play some, some smooth, uh, the rhythmic uh, swinging, and then you must play yeah, some modal. Some modal. Yeah. It is you. As far as I'm concerned, when Baba Led by is invited to the UK to come and play, or to the US, the man is playing jazz. Today we had we had we had yeah. some big artists from uh, like Baba Mal, like Salif Keita and all that. They all played at jazz festivals. King Sonia so, Day too. King Sonia Day, yes. Thank King Sonia yeah. Day. But when we, we say jazz, yeah. thank all you. Right. But when we when we say jazz in Nigeria, when we yeah. say jazz in Nigeria. We, we, our, our mind goes only to Clifford Brown, to, to Charlie Parker and all that. And unfortunately, we do not understand mm -hmm. them. I will tell you this, if you knew when I was playing in the 80s and in the 90s, of course I was playing all those Charlie Parker, all those Clifford Brown thing. But by the time I started my band, of course my band then with a, a lot of Ayo, Ayo, the saxophone player from, from Lagos and all that, When I when I had those when I had those guys sorry, when I had those guys play with me, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah when your volume clearly, has gone down. Clearly, clearly, clearly. When I had that, those guys playing with me, anytime we were invited to come and play at jazz parties, we would play some bebop. By the time we play, and and you know, the the the, the, the clients we asked us then. They will ask us then, oh, Batik, I hope you are going to play all those big pop. I said, no problem. Okay. We are playing all of them. All Shade, I'm going to, I have a point to challenge Shade on. Yes. <laughs> Donna Lee, we are playing all those, you all those numbers. Mean, but, but the problem yeah. was that by the time these same people that told you that the brief they gave our band was to play all those Charlie Parker, they, in fact, they, they used to have all the records. They will play. I remember one gentleman. In uh, at Victoria Land, at Lekki, who says you come and play at his party? Was doing this party for Raji Fashola, and he said, Be a he, he, I went to his house, I slept in his house. He was showing me records. I hope you can play all this. Uh, I said, Yeah, we're going to play them. By the time we played three B buff songs, the man said, Oh, can you guys just play your more pupa or oh, more pupa? <laughs> <laughs> You understand? <laughs> yes, you know, we did your work for my love. Every time. Yes. It happens okay. every time. All right. So, All right. So that's it. Thank you very much. Like, well, you, can, you, can, you can go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, Shadi, <laughs> yeah. you said yeah. something very important yeah. that we must start to, in, to um, uh, blend our traditional music styles with jazz. Yes. Yeah. All right? To create what you call Niger jazz, right? Niger Somebody jazz. has Niger. been doing that. Niger jazz. Somebody yeah. has been doing that for quite a few years and is still doing it now. That yeah. person is Victor Ademofe. Ademofe, yeah. now, yes. Victor Ademofe has been doing that. In fact, I think it's almost a mission for him. <laughs> now, why is Victor? Victor Ademofe is a world class musician, period. He can okay. stand and hold any stage anywhere in the world. He just left Why the U.S. He just you know? left the U.S. He was, in, he was in Canada. He was in France. Okay. He was so in Germany. Why, why is, why is uh, the like, awards? Why there are some, a lot of musicians in Nigeria are world class. 
Why yeah. is it that yeah. they cannot get the, yeah. the right backing yeah. to, because the thing that is missing in, you know, you said we have no jazz culture. We do. What we don't have is the infrastructure to support it. Bros, can I, can I, sorry, uh, can I? Uh, so, so, so when there say, is. When I say we don't have a jazz culture, maybe yeah. in comparison to other countries. It's, there is different everywhere. I, so I accept it's different everywhere. You know, Continue. but what what is missing is the infrastructure. The musicians mm -hmm. themselves have created a, a almost like a, stop, a backstop, so that yeah. they can survive. But it's yeah. long overdue for there to be the infrastructure to support them, because we have musicians that can stand on the world stage. Okay, can we I do. tell you something? We do. Can I share but something? But maybe, may, but maybe what needs to happen first. Let us let them stand and 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 feature on the African stage first. Then we get mm -hmm. them to the world because there is now, so much of this problem. The problem we're talking about now is everywhere on the continent. It's hmm. everywhere. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what. It's everywhere me, on the continent. Let me give you an example, and it might be it might get a little a bit of controversy. In in nineteen two thousand and eighteen, the um, Ingo Herbert invited me to just come and tour the music scene in Germany. And he took us to three cities, Stuttgart, Munich, and Berlin, to check the scene, the music scene. And we ended up at the Stuttgart at the Jazz Open. But we met musicians from all those cities. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Hmm. Yeah. And we, yes, we met musicians. I'm sure I met over 100 musicians. I have all their CDs. In fact, I didn't know that Germany had such a culture. Oh. It took me apart. I, I I came back with I'm sure about maybe as I said maybe fifty or hundred. I, I I didn't I didn't. And every time I looked at the stage, I knew that our musicians can. Yes. Every time yeah. even when we go to Cape Town, I know that our brides can stand on this stage now. Yes. And I'll come and I'll be calling them. Are they can be here now? Yes. I'm I'm going to tell you something. Go. And ah uh, uh, no now. I know I know I know where I know where you're going. I know where you're going, but carry on. No, tell me. You know, so, but, but we, we, and I will start calling them frantically from, mm. from wherever I am. Or when we go to Cape Town, Bright and I will go, we'll just wangle our way. And that, you know, you can play here. Now, let me tell you the challenge. One of the challenges that are faced here, yeah, infrastructure, you know, the Cape Town Jazz Festival, like someone like Rashid, if you go through their brochure, like I have one of the brochures of Cape Town. I haven't been there in a long time. You will see that the Swedish Jazz Foundation or the Norwegian Jazz Foundation or the European Jazz Network would support, would give them some money. And mm. then they have a jazz school. Like mm. uh, Cape Town has a jazz school. Um, yeah. um, who was it? Um, Etukubong started in that school. Do you mm. understand? And some other Nigerians, some Nigerians, after leaving Muson, they were supposed to go to Berkeley, but somehow they could not do what? They could not meet up. They couldn't we go. Yeah. 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 They couldn't go because of the money. Yeah. Do you understand? But the South Africans, somehow, because of the culture that right from like the maybe the 50s, apartheid, when all them, Huma Sekela, Abdullah Ibrahim, Jonas Gwangwa, Dudu Kokwana, yeah. when they all left. Yes. Into exile. Yes. Do you understand? And they came to the US, some came through Nigeria and all yeah. that. And they were told how to make their music and they reinvented their music. One thing I noticed mm. the South African jazz musician, when he's going to play, he will bring a younger musician to open for him. Yeah, okay. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, very correct. Go ahead. A younger yeah, go musician on. to open. Yeah, okay. How many Nigerians, I'm sorry if I'm going to, how many Nigerians, America, um, 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 Nigerian musicians, or Nigerian that, stars, let me say, go ahead. Take, take, will take, apart from the hip hop boys who are doing it all, the Afrobeat boys are doing it all. Oh. A Bonner boy will call a Rema, and the first day they met is on stage. Oh. Can I ask how many stand, times? Stand has, up, comed comedians are doing it. How okay. many times has a Femi Kuti? Taking a Nigerian young Afrobeat musician on top. Okay, let me let me how let many me, times let me, yeah. How many let times has it shown that? I hear you. 
The other thing, so, I'm sorry, I'm something sorry, guys, else. For the sake of time, no, no, I'm one sorry. minute, one last minute, one last minute. On. Ayo, you said you said that everywhere you went in Germany, you came back with about a hundred CDs. Yeah. One thing on the other side it's, of yeah, this. Yeah, I, I, do I just give me the approach? Hang on, continue. I know, I know. But one thing on the other side of this this discussion is that the Nigerian musician mindset is focused yeah. on earning money and not creating a career. He has to survive, bro. I know, he but still, survive. but the two things have to happen. The two things have to happen, and that's where the infrastructure comes in. The two okay. things have to happen because no. without without the career, without the catalog. Okay. Can I? You know. Hello. Let me, anyway, let me leave anyway, with this. <laughs> let, let, no, let me just leave with this point. No, no, let me leave with okay. this point, sir. Yeah. Uh, maybe I wouldn't mention, I don't, maybe I don't want to. There's one or two or three musicians outstanding who have come, who I have known the sacrifices they've made. One is like, this is my rent money, but I want publicity. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Not waiting for anybody to do it for them. I know one or two, I mean, that will say in this genre that I know that this, this is the music I'm playing, but my packaging, my, my, my branding and my publicity, nobody's going to do it for me, but can it be done? And hmm. they're ready to make that sacrifice and it's paid off. Let me give you an example, Mike Aremo. You, you might say he doesn't play, he might play gospel or something. It took, it took hmm. such media, it took, apart from the music, he looked for so much media until media started looking for him. <laughs> Bright Gain. I'm not saying because Bright Gain, but right now he's comfortable with Mr. Lecture. He's my brother. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. So, yeah, well, so, I mean, it, we just keep to it. Can I be honest? I was at the verge of saying no more jazz. I'll be honest with you. I was at the verge of... You can't do that. No, I, we I, have all been there you. and come out of it. You can't. You we can't have do all that. Listen, there listen, and listen come I, out I, I, by the same token, Sadi. I'll I'll give you an Sadi. example. But but take uh, but take. Let me yeah. give you an example. Jazz all right, I'm going to stop you, One, gentlemen. Last yeah. point. Last point. Jazz and conversation has been running for six ago. years. I have run the show for huh? six years without sponsorship. Yes, you've tried now at all. But Mr. Fisher, Mr. Fisher, and Mr. I Fisher, can't stop. You are a big man. I can't. No, I can't stop. <laughs> no, 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 because no. you're a big man. No, because the because the aim is so important. Jazz in Nigeria has to be supported. It has to be at all well, costs. Well, the corporation, the corporations will tell you that. I went to international breweries. A director of international breweries took me there to meet the marketing director. See, this is the package. This is the proposal I took there. Color everything. You understand? And told me that we are not even going to give you this money. This is your music. Why are you carrying it around? What do you want us? And looked at me like this. That who is there? How much are you going to bring for us? <laughs> do you understand? But we keep. Professor Lee, you can, you can, you can. Let Let's send this so that we can we can continue, please. Professor Lee, that's can a Nigerian you... phenomenon. All right, all right. I'm back here to round up all you are saying. Um, sorry, was told of um when Malzibis was playing, he played the solo so beautiful, and the lady was like, "Wow, I'll give my entire life to be able to play like that." And Mal said, "Yes, that's what I did. I gave my life." Yeah. There was a yeah. there was a different era. That's all we were doing. No side gig, no side job. We were just yeah. playing. We practiced for hours. So thank you so much. Um, the beauty of all what you've said is, is that the seeds have been sown. Many of us are thinking now, what can be done? Um, I thank you for your expertise. They are not telling us what you read. They are telling us what you live. And I know things will get better as long as we have you at the helm of things, not giving up, not looking back. You put your hands on the plow. May, they are counting on May I say something, please? Back. May I add something, please? Uh, 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 the, the purpose of this particular discourse is um, 
Mr. Jimmy Sholanke, who we started watching from when we were much younger, and he is still going on at the age of 80. So let's take courage from him. A real trooper, a dramatist, a performer, a guitarist, a singer, an all-rounder. So we can take that courage, Shady. <laughs> no problem. All right. Thank you. And Thank you. Madam Ike, you, you told us that, well, that impromptu, that impromptu performance I called for, that for some reason your mic was off. Your mic is <laughs> on now, so can we have a do-over? Just two minutes. Batik, Madam Ike. Yeah. yeah. Can we have a do-over? Batik, what do we do? now? Who we'll goes first? Something, Batik. Oh, you want me to go first? Um, you want no, me to go first? Um, you know what we can do, and in what case? I'm going to suggest, <laughs> agree on the song. Um, and Batik introduces it. Madam Edgar sings it. Take a short solo and end. Now, now to come. Hello? 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 Yeah. Hi. I have the floor, please. In conclusion, you said you said I have two minutes to recap. Two minutes, you said. No, that's not that's not what that's that's okay. Not what, what did you say? Said. What did you say? You were mentioning yeah. our names, yeah. Yeah, I was talking about the song you tried to do, but I'm being told now that there's okay. another presentation that's due now. So now I have okay. to yeah so yeah we're about to watch we're about to watch a movie now okay yeah okay. so you guys please stay on and watch what is next okay, okay. yeah yeah so right now we are going to have um, a little viewing of the movie of the movie that was made about Babadba. No, I'm not on that. No, Oh, Okay, yeah. Okay, there's Oladele who wants to say something now. Sorry, I'm. I'm there's so much I'm wearing at the same time, and I've got only two ears. So, Oladele, please come in and say something. Okay. Oh dear. Okay, phone sorry. over. Um, I did later. My phone there. is dying. <laughs> Hello. 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 Sorry, what? Well, the piano that stopped. The last the lady didn't stick. Go ahead, please. Right. Okay. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it's been an interesting moment listening to the Nigerian jazz community. Uh, well, I, I think you have to you have your two system on. Can you put off one? You have two okay. system. Yes. Uh, is, um, no, he's monitoring one and factory. Okay, let me just move outside for this one. Can you hear me now? Just mute one and go ahead. The other one is muted off already. Okay, go ahead now. Okay. Better now. So um it's nice listening to Nigerian uh, jazz community. And I I think I can say I, I met virtually almost uh all the people that I've spoken to they are, are giving nice presentation today. But I have one thing to say regarding the last two presenters. Uh, their positions. The one is from Shadi Bobo and uh, uh, Mr. Fisher, as well as Matik. Now, I have been in South Africa since for almost 10 years now. I started at the school you are talking about, South African College of Music, in the of Cape Town. Yes, it has an interesting jazz culture. Now, Rikunuji studied there, and she came, but he also left. But that's not the point. The contest for Nigerian jazz is quite different for South Africa. Hence, we can compare. South Africa is, is, a, is responding. The jazz culture 
Cape Town Jazz, uh, Antonio Jazz Festival, and the one in Johannesburg also, they have different contests. So what we are going to do in Nigeria is that we need to ask ourselves, what is jazz doing for Nigeria people? What is jazz in Nigerian culture? In its political economy, in its social development, what is the role of jazz? Jazz cannot be on its own. Jazz cannot be an entertainment scene. In, in South, South Africa, Africa, jazz is not an entertainment material. Jazz is a political tool. It's an educational tool. It's a cultural tool, and it's also a form of protest. For in the 1950s and the 1960s, jazz was a particular, it, it was a weapon that developed across time of the days in South Africa. I also host a jazz, I'm currently also a jazz festival in Johannesburg. And we will have a bigger platform at this university. We host jazz festival and jazz conference on a yearly basis. We've had one this year. And we have people on this platform who also attended. But the point, that's not the point. The point is that what, what is, is jazz doing in Nigeria for people? Jazz is not a thing you want to enjoy. It's not about enjoyment. It's about, if that's a statement it must make for the people. Politician will listen. I had somebody saying, uh, that was coming to the scene in the 90s. Um, I was at the event that about the someone who looked in, in 2017, when he was doing his manifesto. I was at that particular event. I had what he said about music. But the point is that politicians, organizations will not invest in what is going on in Nigeria if we don't twist it a bit. I think I will go with Shadi Kobo's approach, but not entirely in that sense. Just is not Fuji. But Fuji can be a material for jazz, and it has been already. Can I, can I add something, please? Just one, sorry. Okay. The organizers of the Cape Town International Jazz Festival, I think it was um, the last president, not um, the current guy, not um, Ramaphosa, but the guy before him, Zuma. He challenged the organizers that you guys, because of the Cape Town Jazz Festival itself, the Cape Town Jazz Festival was bringing about about 800 or about, about 850 or 900 million rand. And he pushed them that he wants them to hit the one billion, um, one billion rand by a certain year because of the tourism effect. Because over forty thousand people were coming for that festival in a place that is two about two hours away from Joburg, so it has an economic impact. Yeah. So when when all the big sponsors like MTN, Escom. Um, Standard Bank and Co. When they pulled out from sponsoring the Cape Town International Jazz Festival, do you know who took it off? Department of Arts and Culture and Cape I Town know, Tourism. I that. Yes, and I they carried it not because of the love of just the music, but because yes. of the economic impact that the music yeah. has. Now, let me tell you, let me now transpose to Nigeria. Please just listen to me. Jazz won't do that for Nigeria, but you know what we do it for Nigeria? Afrobeats. <laughs> I will just leave it hanging like that. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. Afrobeats will do the it for Nigeria. Are, I, am, I agree with you to a larger extent, but we, 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 we also, also find ourselves getting trapped in the notion of uh, liver. Must we call it I that? No. That's I one. Know, but you see, Number two, in the South African context, the political scene. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, sure you know that the two festivals they were modeled from London and and Greek and Europe. Yes, yes. The the South, 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 yeah. Not the jazz festival. And it came for for the for the political just like opera in South Africa also. But because it was well positioned as a political voice of the ANC, then the government only do it. <laughs> So that's it. So in Nigeria, whatever we want to call it, it can't be an entertainment field. My brother, let, let, but let me let me give you this. That's one. Let, let me the international jazz festival is happening in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Yeah. They are now associated with what they call National Art Festival. So they train yeah, yes. almost three million students on the yearly to the festival. festival. So that's, that's what they, that's a part of cultural. Uh, for oddity. So all yeah. the students at University, they go to that conference. It's mandatory. 
because they see it as a space where people learn or they, they, they meet. So it's a social space, it's a musical space, it's also a political space. So the people organize, they bring international artists from across the world and their own teachers across the country. They assemble all the students from the township to come and learn jazz. They open these students to all these yeah. teachers. So they, they have space of workshop. After that, the student will perform alongside international artists. And this, how, this is also how local jazz musicians in South Africa have gotten into our international visibility. As I speak yeah. to you right now, one of my classmates, which you know very well, Nguzo Makatini, is currently playing wow. right now. He's having a show tonight. This is how this okay. music, these guys became known internationally. This is the same thing we can do for ourselves. Can we not do it? I'm sorry. Because it's not part of your business. But we are organizers. We need to strategize a way of taking this particular tool to the government. Show them how it's going to work for them. That's the only way they are going to listen to you. But if they just come and listen and enjoy the music, they won't listen to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, may I say something? Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You for Hopefully, your, can you hear me? Thank you very much, Oladele. That was most Hopefully, can you hear me? Um, we are trying to move on now. But I need to, come, I I need to say to something in. to what I need to say something to what Shadi said. Can you hear me? All right, one minute then. Yeah. Yeah, very quickly. Sh Shadi, you said um, about jazz can't do that for Nigeria in regards to tourism, but Afrobeats yeah. can. I think what Afro people often say Afro Afro oh, yeah, whatever. Yes, yes. My point is, at, yeah. at some point, Afrobeats Afro 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 with the Afro S couldn't. And yeah. I think that's what Dele is talking about. When for, for and, and whilst I understand the struggles, and I totally agree with you, I don't believe anybody should stay somewhere where you can't get your daily bread. So I'm not of that mind that's going to tell you, keep going at it, Shadi, till you have no more shoes left. <laughs> like straight up. Honestly, I'm not going to do that because I don't think it's fair. It's too much pressure on one person. However, there, there is a truth in that when, when you said night jazz and, um, and Papa P said there is somebody doing that and, and I remember before I moved to this country I remember I used to hear all those you know Nigerian hip hop as I called it and all those that wanted to sound American etc etc and they kept going and they kept going and they kept going. And they kept going. And then you suddenly started to get the likes of Swing Popo. And then Solek took over as a younger version of Swing Popo. And, and things began to take a different shape. And, 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 and our language and pidgin and Yoruba and Igbo and all of that stuff started to come into modern contemporary um, pop music, effectively. Why is it that jazz, and this is what I say about the problem, the albatross, what's weighing jazz down is this idea of purism. As okay. long as we continue to stay in that space, we won't we get far. You said something very important. You said, why hasn't Sheo Kuti had a young, I don't know, uh, um, Victor Ademofe Open for on, him. you know, covering... Uh, yeah, open for you know, him, yeah. Opening for him. Why? Because I'm sorry, there's a lot of people who have inherited names who are solipsistic, and that's a fact. So those who are not solipsistic, bring them on. Papa P, for six years, this man has been doing his show with no sponsorship, as I have mine about Lagos, with no sponsorship. And I'm happy to bring any one of you to come and talk about your Lagos, in relation to your jazz, we you know, and talk about you and talk about your your art form. So let's stop waiting for those those who inherited forms. Oh, sorry, Goni. Otoni Kamasong. Kusentole Mumile Nuru. Let's stop waiting for them to invite. Those are family. Invite a Victor Victor Demofe because you've got a platform. 
be or do oh, whoever, anybody, anybody, just invite the young artist. Okay, Ed Took, when was the last time he invited one? And we all know when Ed Took started. So Taban, now what's it become? We got to point the other way. Wait, wait, wait. Ed Took has played on my festival like two or three times. Day. Pardon? Etik has played on the Lagos International app about two or three times. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking about inviting the young artists who still need a, 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 a stage, a platform Curity. to open. You ready? Yes, my love. I'm listening. Yes, my love. Now, let me explain. Let me explain exactly what uh, Shadi was trying to say. And I'm going to take it from the point of football. All of us know one guy called Stephen Keshi. Stephen Keshi, you got it. He played football for Nigeria. And he, he went, opened the door. Yes, he went to, to this Belgium. country. And Belgium. Belgium. He, he got to Belgium and he saw that there were opportunities for opportunities. young players there. He came back to Nigeria and took a lot of people there. Yes. 1999. 1999. I already, I already started my band, Bjorn and Bati. I don't want to mention the name of this artist, one of our leading touring artists in Nigeria. He had a problem with his trumpet line. He called me. He said, Biodu, he asked that I should be brought to his place. He said, Biodu, please, I had a problem. Can you please come and play trumpet for me in my band? The online had problem. I said, no problem. I said, but the thing is, my intention is I have my own band, Beard and Party. When you have yes. your tour, when you have your tour, please, this one that you cannot play, you will ask my band to go and play. And he said, no problem. Me. Here was a guy I lived with in 1994. I was a postgraduate student in Lagos. I lived in his house. I remember all the time there was no internet, there was no uh, mobile phone then. In his house then, at uh, Omole, Omole Estate. Oyibos will travel from Switzerland, from UK, from America, to come and beg him for festivals. He will tell them, for the rest of these years, we are, we are fully booked. Can you make it less there? They were shifting festivals because of him, how big he was. I called and I said, Ore, come. There are so many bands in Nigeria. You could tell them, we were booked for this one. Can you please invite so, 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 so people? The guy said, what do you mean? Do you know what I went through to get those festivals? No, you guys, you keep going. <laughs> Nigeria, no Nigeria, Nigeria, we held so it. We got you respect. <laughs> that was, that was, that was a, that was a funny, very funny thing that now happened. There was a year he was going to travel. He took a journalist. He paid for the ticket of a journalist to go so that the guy would write about him. Hello, gentlemen. Yeah, but you're not saying anything different. That from what I'm saying, I'm saying exactly the same as you both. The fact of the matter is, people are not being taken along. New, young, bright talent are not being taken along to the stage. Yes. You have to bring me to America. <laughs> All right. Um, at this point, in the conference. Um, unfortunately, we had to, to meet the other participants because um, it's time for the vote of thanks, which is going to be given by Arule Taiwo Shulanke. Well, I'm glad to say, which I'm glad to say, who I'm glad I'm, I'm, who I'm glad to say was my senior in international school in Badon and was one of the nice seniors. Never uh, took my lunch money, money, never punished me. Yeah. And, and I was always going to go the way Yeah. So, so Arule, um, um, once, once more, more, I wish you a good day on the house. house. Yeah. And we'll allow you yeah. now to come ahead and yeah. take the vote of thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Let me, uh, please, Arule, please, before you go on, uh, I just want to remind that we're going to show Jimmy's show. 
the film produced by um, Ayodele Adewumi, all the way from Canada. So the vote of thanks, just to say vote of thanks, and then we now show the film uh, uh, for the next one hour. So, so you can go ahead, uh, Arule, and explain why Jimishul Anka is no longer there, because you were with him. We didn't know that you had left. Yeah, I just, I okay, just left ahead. him now. Um, I think he has a little bit of a internet connectivity issue, um, but he'd been on there all the while, and I, with him, I'm heading back to Lagos right now. So I'm in the car. So greetings, everybody. It's been uh, amazing. I, I mean, the discourse has been on point. It's been intellectual. And I think it goes beyond just us talking about what needs to be done or what doesn't need to be done. It's, it's for us to take action and start to do. I will pull and bring people along. Um, sorry, I have a hiccup because yes, yes, it was long. I haven't slept, so forgive me for the hiccups when it comes when I'm saying this. There are no words to say for what you have done. setting this up, arranging this, organizing this for my aburo. I really, really, really appreciate it. I really, really appreciate it for everybody that's there. There, there. There's some people that I know well. Shadi, Professor Koka, Downsy, my good friend, Ayuade Wumi, who shot this documentary, um, Jaman. Uh, who else? I'm trying to, because I'm trying to see who else that I, I, I know first and Everybody else that I do not know personally, the grace of God will continue to be upon you. Thank you. Any alad roti for the ones who speak Yoruba, for the ones who don't, the favor of God will continue to be upon you on behalf of the Sholanke family. I want to say, God bless you. Thank you very much for this. We're honored. And I pray that we will do more of this. We'll have a lot more discuss and opportunity to talk and to grow the jazz genre of music. Because I, I listen, I may not play I may not, but I'm an aficionado of it. And I've learned a lot. Um, my brother, Biodun, and I have talked a little bit. And I appreciate everything he brings. My Egbo from ISI, Peter Fisher, thank you. Because back in the day, they had a band that we used to enjoy back then. So um, I want to say thank you. Let me not ramble on because if I talk more, I'll just keep rambling. Thank, thank you, thank you. What's not enough to express our gratitude? We feel honored. Thank you, and everybody enjoy Jimmy Show. It's a really good piece of work of art. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good evening. Good night.
Let me. I think on mute, on mute everybody. I mean, um, my big brother, Taiwo, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, it's nice seeing you again. It's nice being part of this celebration. We are the Lagos Jazz Society, and we are so glad that we are, we are allowed to take up a, a bit of this, just taking a share of the glory. Thank you very much. And what do we say? We say again at 85, then at 90, then at 95, mm -hmm. and at 100. Thank you very much. Greetings from all of us and to the pretty lady beside you. <laughs> Bye. Oga Jama will now okay, round up on. with a movie. Okay. Uh, this is to say thank you to everybody who has been here this morning. And uh, some people are still here in the house. Thank you. Maybe give a round of applause to people who are here. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going into the film screening, which I promised. And I mentioned at the beginning that we have the books, that we have the book that have been published uh, on, uh, on Jimmy Shola and K. The book is uh, published by, it's written by Oluwato in Sutton, and it's published by Bookcraft, but it is not out yet, but you can pre-order, you can pre-order this book through Bookcraft website, or you can send message to me or to LJS, uh, Legal Jazz Society, and then we have all of that um, for, uh, we make sure that you get it. This is the book, it's called Jimmy Sholanke, The Indestructible. In the book, it stated that uh, it was a statement. Uh, this was an expression used on him by Wally Shrink, whom we are going to see in the documentary anyway. So the book is available. There's also the album, Alba I thought the producer would be in, but he didn't show up. So I don't know why, why uh, that was the case. I'm sorry again, we couldn't have live band because um, we have problem with our sound uh, team because it rained in Lagos and the sound man did not show up until when we almost ended. He's hearing me now, so he must be angry that I'm uh, putting him under the bus. But if you know me very well, I'm always like that. So, don't rush him. This is the camera. So, the book is uh, The album is available. The film is available. If your Atom is still in the house, Atom, I would like you to just, uh, because people, some people were not here when you were there. Uh, I would like to get you to uh, to Atom. Just speak briefly to us on this film again. Thank you for being there. I know you're supposed to have been at work by now. So Atom, people are still here and then people are on Zoom. So go ahead, please. Thank you, everybody. I would like to take people's time. It's already late, so the, the film will speak for itself. I'll just say enjoy it and learn one or two things about the story of Jimmy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll do, I'll do how do I get my desktop? Okay. Okay. Can you share from your end? Okay, that's fine, yes. Oh, okay, please share from your end. This is not the one I have, actually. Yeah, yeah, share, share the one you have. The one I have, share. Okay, let me share the one I have. Yeah. Can you see what I have? No, 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 that's not it. Okay. Please stop sharing. Okay. Uh, Please one second, I will get to it now.
You know. You know. I know. Let me wait for the original source. Hold on, please. Okay. Okay. Let me just share something just to bridge while I get to uh, while I get back into that. <laughs>
I think it was one of the greatest Nigerians. And he, he, he's a fine actor. Because we did all, I'm sure Jimmy and I did over 40 things. Jimmy was, uh, Jimmy was like a, uh, you know, that expression, chip of the old block. I found it, Jimmy, I feel like a, a kindred spirit. Ready to take risks, uh, but also politically motivated. Just do the sketch, what the sketch is about, the kind of society we're living in. And, and so there was a very special relationship between Jimmy Jimmy Shilake is my father, is my uncle, is my boss, is my leader, is my mother. Is an inspiration, is a motivator. Mr. Anka is a so many I mean, long before I got to the last of the time, I've already knew Jimmy Shulanke. He was legendary. Jimmy Shulanke, well, there were very few of them. Jimmy Shulanke, uh, Sam Fuku, Joe Modi. You know, let us say we're lucky that we, we, we met their reputation still very much. When, when I got in the last I joined. The Department of Theater, and I think it was then. The name was still very much around. He just came back from back. He just came back from back. He just came back from back. Then he just went and talked for fashion. Fashion the song. And you know, they've done all those productions. I told their names were just everywhere. They were doing stuff. They were doing stuff about a performing company. So all the legendary stuff they post were still very much in our face. So, so Jimmy Shilanka has been part of my life for for that long. Uh, maybe you think that what they look by bio junior you know You, are, you have to encounter Jimmy Shulanke. Jimmy Shulanke stood and he made it's just legendary. To tell you the truth, I must say, anytime, he'll add something to it and say, This is Uncle Jimmy on the stage. Yes. Probably when he's in the shower, in the bathroom, maybe he starts aside. I'm sure not too many people will be that about him. I am Oluji, me. You would be not sure. Two great personalities. 
Want to cash and be not the one way a lonely little guru, only little guru would be. I wrote different kinds of high life things in those days for the Kuruba fan. Eventually, because we moved from Lagos so, uh, to and our house was just straight behind a lab, ninth floor, which was owned by Vincent, that retired from uh, uh, Central Communities. Um. And I had the access through the park to go into the place and watch them at the other. Timidly, I will call to see the two of us today. And they are more than half of songs there. And they started buying my songs. Eventually, they started recording them. That's how, even when I was in the second school, my song, Kunile Kumburu, and I would say, that's what I'm as my son was started being a nationally international and all that. When I left the country, my father just put me in the hands of his uh, brother, the then commissioner for Western Region in London. They were the people who brought all those uh, Niger Light, Caxton Press, uh, and and we found one of them present. Let him come to one another. assistant to GR Salt and the McDonald's. He went straight to casting press. He's still there today. One of the uh, businesses that we can create. Assistant to the GI In Lagos, I couldn't, I couldn't, I just couldn't go anywhere, you know, without being asked, where are you coming from? Imagine that when I got to Ibadan, in the West Water Room, in Yagoku, in Ibadan, a very posh area, the house of the Western Region Commissioner in London, and I had the opportunity of going out without anybody asking me where I was coming from. <laughs> and Yakoku was just a mere distance of walking to Okebola and Lo, L O Lo, Okebola, <laughs> Independence Hotel, Paradise Hotel. Yeah. I got that. <laughs> Uh, the closest to Yagoku was the uh, Independence Hotel. And when I go there, I met different fans uh, trying to uh, different human beings, saxophonists there. Uh, that's where I met Orlando Julius. So I think of it. I composing and you know, singing with my hands. And that took me off my regular path of engineering at Captain Press to a point that <laughs> at first I would sleep off early in the morning and I would do work. By the time I got to work at the lady, I was already tired and sleepy and useless for technical job. <laughs> and so, little by little, I hated uh, oil, oil dead in my fingers. Little by little, I didn't like to wear any overall and go on any horse ladder again. Because how could you have done an, uh, a job all through the night? You are going to your real job now. And uh, 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 give me, give me, uh, sit up, sit up, sit up. Uh, somebody have the gun ladder. Somebody who has not left all through the night. Now to climb a ladder, horse ladder, and then try to do something, put something right, 
I started thinking, one day you will fall here and nobody will really go pick you up because you will be scattered. <laughs> this is why I gave up going to work. And when uh, my uncle came back and they told him, he said, okay, I apologize that I will be going. Then he went back again because well, he was always up and down. He was a commissioner. They called it commissioner in those days, uh, not uh, ambassador or anything, but Western Regions Commissioner in London, which means in Europe and all the other areas. But the final time he came back and they said that for about four weeks, they have not seen it. He just came and said, since you are not going to work anymore, please, you cannot see my house. Just my bag. And went to it was 1961, 62. I went to Independence Hotel until I met somebody from my town, a photographer who knew my mommy and said, Where did you say you are living? I'm saying I'm living in an Independence Hotel. <laughs> what are you doing in Independence Hotel? Okay, that's where I have a small place. Yes. But uncle, uncle said I should leave his house because I am not really a uncle that now. Come and stay in my house. That's where I carried my bag from uh, Elizabeth's room into Fred Ojudu's house in Adbidi. But then I started picking up. I started picking up. People started asking me for this. Ah, um, there was a band in Paradise Club, then the two contacts. Oh, you love my singing, the jazz, and all that. I was what already singing Louis uh, Armstrong, uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, and my most favorite was the things. Uh, I was singing all those songs. Uh -huh, that's fine. I had a job, Seth Phillips, and a few nights, the Central Hotel in Paris. And sometimes I met uh, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, he introduced me to your new player. And then I met uh, Brother Tuji at the Adat's place. And the two went into Mbari Club in the middle. That's where I met the greatest people of my life together. I met uh, Chris Okiki, Ralph Kumar, Yemili Jack, Wally Shoyinga, and um, Demas Nwoko. <laughs> Demas, Papa Demas Nwoko. I met all of them. And then they had a lot of dramatic uh, programs. But all the people I met were all performing with them in their theatrical productions. I joined them. In 1963, uh, Ulibaya, uh, Begum, Hendrix, all of them, they were talking about uh, the start the first school of drama in Africa. Hey, you guys, you better uh, apply. You, it will be good for you. The first school of drama, like the upper was around. It was in Bari that started drama studies in Africa. Eventually, they put the, the forms out. School of drama itself. Actually, I'm 
extra. Uh, the school of drama, practically all the boys in this small. It's a gift from our course. Ten class yet, very, 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 they all excel in different ways. But they can be in the address, they write many great actors. Uh, to do a lot of music, sound, 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 sound. So that to be a way from singing every day, but I still sneak out and do my. Uh, singing and uh, gigs and all that. By the time we played from the School of Drama, I, Ratuji, and uh, Yomi, and some more from the Betty Okutie, Betty Okutie, uh, we were asked if we wanted to go on uh, on the uh, course of the, because I have been a professional a long time before them from the day. Said, those who are going to be performing. So that's how I became one of the uh, machines for training all other beginners in theater in Africa. <clears throat> That's where I the majority of them, Professor J. Fou, uh, uh, name them, name them, name all of them that are uh, in the general hierarchy of theater now. That's where we are. And by then, the WNTV just started and they were in need of good uh, theatrical material. Drama, music, so I was doing both. I was doing music, my guitar busking for the children's party and all that. And at the same time, in those days, I would have about three, four, three, four scripts that I was studying at the same time. Or original theater, because when we finished that program at the School of Drama, we in Kaba, he set up original theater. Well, we began with the 1960 masks, and uh, <clears throat> masks were the, which we might say was a kind of a, a component of middle class uh, professionals in many fields. I remember one member worked in the oil department. Uh, another was a civil servant, one was a teacher, one was a doctor, and so on, but with a passion for acting. Now, the 1960 masks as a company, as a, as a brand, if you like, by what they could do in terms of what you might call, quote unquote, subversive theater. In other words, they had their jobs, I mean, a couple of them worked, as I said, for government, civil service, and uh, one worked for the Nigerian Broadcasting Service. So they were limited in terms of their appearance, taking on roles, which the government might consider very critical uh, of, their, of their existence, of their policies, and so on. Uh, so it was a bit, uh, we could do big plays, we could do standard plays. They were very efficient, articulate, and some of them actually had gone to uh, uh, drama school. Uh, uh, I wanted a group which 
severe uh, dramatic skin. Right? So we began encouraging young people like Jimmy to come into the group so that they also more experienced actors, while at the same time they were being groomed as an entity that could be pulled out at any time to perform this kind of, shall we say, social critical theatre which the United States of Africa could not undertake, and without compromise these senior members of the United States of Africa. We listen to theatre company, uh, which for most of the production, <coughs> I was stage manager most of the production. I say 100% of the production. I was stage manager. We were training young actors, junior and junior. Some of them are professionally minded, others are just amateurs. And eventually, from, and I'm going to tell you that the United States must be very, very cooperative and very protective of them. The contributor to feed in them, giving them, making sure they had a little bit of pocket money, and so on and so forth. And when I pulled out the original theater to perform, the United States Masters, that is the senior people there, took on the backstage work, publicity work, tickets, front stage. So they emerged as an entity in their home, on, uh, under the patronage and the, shall we say, the protection and, uh, uh, and uh, general collaboration of the United States of Masses. Of course, a couple of them stood out among the others, but generally the, the, the standard was pretty even. There were no duds. Somewhere in this was in the we needed like I needed at the time the police must to be to be able to do everything act sing dance do acrobatics whatever was required and very very agile yeah this is very young people yeah. group who the uh, uh, and the uh, yes, of it. Uh, and the people in the of the dawn, we are we are like Emily Johnson, like uh, Olga Adeni Johnson, for example, Francesca Pereira, who ended up being Francesca Human. Of like government uh, secretary. Yeah, Ralph of Parayan military. Those were the groups we were looking up to for experiences, expertise, and everything on stage. The reason the other was coming on stage and at this television weekly presentation. And since then, we are all he would just send scripts. Before it's, before it's done, Wally would present the script. And before it's known, I would have, I would have mastered it ready for uh, the week's uh, presentation. You know, you, you are ready for production. They come to production. We can put the production together. You are the script to them. You can get a whole script in the day. One evening. Second evening, we are going to rehearse. Third evening, we have the costumes and party. Friday, Saturday, production is ready. To me, it was a joy coming home and finding. Young men or women are so devoted, they are because you all you finish rehearsals and what eight, nine, sometimes you all go to the night. Sometimes when it comes, sometimes it doesn't. I, I don't drink, I follow them. That's I don't get all the view from the money. 
All these nine persons were not there. So it was from the Orisu Theater when uh, Ogarin is uh, here and there, activity, the human rights, and uh, uh, we're all waiting for Ogarin's administration of Tonga. What happened there between the Atomic and the Atomic President? So, and uh, therefore, I actually encourage him to take some political risks, which uh, some political duties, let's put it that way, which I would not. Uh, please, on others, simply because I saw Jimmy's temperament as being one in particular. And during the wetter days, uh, Jimmy played a very prominent role in the resistance that we put up against the then pretending fascism of the party, the ruling party, West, and their collaborators in the center. Again, in my head, hours of an expression of Jimmy Sri Lanka, Omar Wu, Omar Wu And you couldn't say the same of all of them. Oh, some others, yes. But in particular, Omar Wu. So you could trust him. Some very delicate mission during that critical period, as you know, the crisis in the West. And he would do it. Had a Shinomere. Yeah. Wouldn't realize that it had been on a mission for him. So it was a very special relationship. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to tell him that. Tell him that. I say he's speaking to tell him, but I'm not going to go into details. And so it was easy for Professor, late Professor Dako and Deguba to take over the team. And the team, I'm sure, metamorphosed to the acting company of the Department of Theater Arts. <clears throat> so when it became the acting company, he had my job that they had. I uh, was moving from front of the school to Joe and all that. But eventually, all the people who set up the school of drama moved from Ibad to Ipe. They all were moved through a message from the PC in those days. He brought all of them out of African studies in UI straight away to come and set up Institute of Cultural Studies in Italy. Because the building that was being <laughs> completed then was the Institute of Cultural Studies. It is expands uh, arts, uh, theater for drama, music department, and all. So he led all of them to effect. And when they got there, he quickly talked to them about setting up, you know, a town gown situation for drama because there was no theater uh, on campus here. So they went and took Oriolokum in Arubi. They rented the whole premises. And when they rented the whole premises, of course, they had to create an open air. That's where I'm making my open air, to open air theater. And since they had all the professors around them to do the job, they had polarity in them, drama. They had mm, 
great Akeyuma. They had him there. And they had Peggy Apa. She took uh, the they set it up and it was working. And I kept reading about their Ife Festival of the Arts every year. People going there, only local. That's when they decided that uh, the best thing to Let's take him. They started sending messages to me. Late for Laro to me. Also send Brother Aguega, late Brother Aguega to me with the note. And please come over. We want to talk to you and all that. Hmm. I just made up my mind. Okay. okay. And when I got to Ife, that was the most wonderful part of my life. Because when they were interviewing me about music, they knew I was already a few tracks, a few uh, CV messages of my having to perform with his band, a musician, a dancer. Ah, maybe that's why I'm still working. <laughs> I was a good dance instructor, in fact, not just uh, Peggy Appa, who was now in it. Eh? taught me in UI. I knew that uh, he knows what to do with his body as per dance. The Nolaro TV. Uh, TV. They made me the assistant to three directors. Assistant to director dance, assistant to director music, assistant to director drama. That's why I enjoyed the real look. I was working 24 hours. At times I would sleep there. So that we would work in the morning at 6 a.m., 7 a.m. That's where I loved it, that aspect of it. And that was where, because of the pens, the pens, and the power of the pens of Olaruti, in his simplicity, in his most theatrical, you know, representation took me. And I started enjoying it so much. So that's why I went to Ife and I and he too from that 69 to 71, 72, four and we we were taking place touring Nigeria. You know, I, I said, oh, wow. I enjoyed it. And that's when, when we took Obora and went to Bene. As the Oba of Bene, some birds, some birds dread water, ducks scream in it. The same it is with some men. Some men dread trouble. Others got trouble. You, you, you. Why did you kill one Gebo? Because the moon is the little scary stars cast the leader of Adu. Tonight you all die. I finished the war and we are to the stadium. And Governor Osai Boko of Bermuda said to the team that this man is going, he's not going back to him. He's our Oba. He is real. He is our Oba. We will employ him here. That's how I was employed in the beginning. I was put in the Midwest uh, Arts Council. The 72, 73, 74, 75. I was in Benin. Setting up their sets, music, all their, all their graduates from different uh, uh, performing as uh, uh, dispositions. Folks came and joined me there. And we did a lot of things. Eventually, when first act was around, uh, you know, they say maybe 73, maybe 74, maybe 70. Uh, maybe uh, eventually, it came on 77. But before 77, I was already back in the back. 
because on food that part, who directed uh, Langburu and Dexalin Yasej, who was the head of the department, requested that cut from me. So I came back to the Department of Theatre Arts just a year or two before next And so we built up the space, we built up the joy here. And we did a lot of other things at that time. But after first time, I just decided to I met a lot of uh, theatrical giants from all over. I want to go to Pine London, did about two, three productions in London, and then moved up to America. In another three, four months, I was in different productions. And even in less than two months that I was, less than a month that I was in America, that was when I did that theatrical thing for Rap Madonna, Onola, Ujagbara Gada, Ayel Ujara, Onodira, Rio Do, Rekoja, Ero Bodo. Uh, hey. Eventually, it was too cold in the river. And each time I opened my mouth to the guy I was uh, sharing the house with, Benji, he would tell me, uh, I just spoke to somebody in uh, Los Angeles. They said the place is very warm now that there was even sun in this same America. In this same America. Sun in LA. Just decided. I want to go to LA. Uh, the flight is so sounds okay, that's all. I think around then it was about 60, 70 or something. Okay. Mm. Just packed my bag and took off. As I was landing, I was still wearing my winter coat. And as I was landing, sea sun, I had to be taking off that sea sun. Season and it's just green. And this is like Africa. Ah. That's how I ended up in a day. Just freak them out. You know, when the, you know your language, you know your first in tactics and all that, you can take them. Uh, say, I share. I say means amen. But what I'm saying is in prayer, you might not know it, I might describe it together. Hey, Mark, the whole the whole house was moving archer. I finished your thing on the archer. Very nice. Very nice. That was my first uh, so, and then that's how I ended the show anyway, with some other tracks, and I ended up on the ice. Uh, there were three people, four people, five people. I did I said, I came in, I was uh, with somebody here. I mean, no, 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 you can't. You are coming with us, so uh, we want to treat you. Ah, uh, this was fine. Uh, no, 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 we stick you out. We are, uh, as I got into the Wahala of the early area. But from there, I started getting uh, jobs in LA. Eventually, I had to set up an hour of the African review. Eight two cars to take us to any uh, location. What we were doing was book songs, uh, African stories, uh, short dramatic, explanatory uh, sketches. We did that to a point that the uh, California Africans get me. And we have the papers in this house. And meanwhile, one of the people who accepted me the first day, uh, a young lady became my wife. And then I discovered that she used $100 bills to put something there, no skills. I felt that 
you want to be part of it, you better let them know. So I decided, because at the end of the day, I had a baby girl. And when I moved from Pasadena back to LA, it was always complaining that I would break your head with just one shot. I don't want any problem because you left the place. So when I go back to Ipe, immediately, Professor Shenga was the head of the department and said, look, forget all that rubbish. We have work to do here. And I've stayed here. Once upon a time, yes, I became a farming true storyteller from having told stories to people all over the world. And I, mean, I was thinking, if I can stand in front of you and tell you stories, my culture, and you can enjoy this culture, and you can uh, understand it that much. So when I came back to Nigeria, I brought two of my <coughs> performers in the uh, African Review Incorporated. I brought two of them. And we were thinking of doing some stories, telling them. Lodging at a Unilag uh, guest house around the Unilag uh, staff. Majority of the people there are on their feet. We held a show in their compound of children, of the staff, and everybody. The show was jam packed. We had a good show. Before we had the show, myself and we derived from the play. We invited the LTBA. So when the LTBA came and covered all the show, some of their managers came and said, uh, uh, it was very fine. You know, we should come and meet them. We should sit down and talk. They would like a series of children's programs and such. That was in uh, uh, LTBA. So we derived and I went, we met them, and then we agreed. We started recording family saying, Any I started enjoying it. I started enjoying it again. I started feeling it's nice to be back in Nigeria because the reaction was very wide. And people were saying, ah, come with Jimmy. Ah, thank you. Come with Jimmy. So my mind started saying in Nigeria. So I started moving. I went to the party. I got to him. It was a bad thing. Also, me, because I was dejected in the American cap, American bag, and I was acting American on the. Where is that? Hello. Me in my office. Okay. <laughs> Into I went to my Jessica the American <laughs> to his office. That means, sir. Hey, Mr. Man, take that cap and that bag, throw it outside before you stand in front of me. To pick that off, to be back, I'll get somewhere. Yes, sir. 
write a few scripts for me on maybe immunization, uh, breastfeeding, think about all of them, safe motherhood and cuts and cold. By the time I was writing all these experimental scripts then, I started composing songs for each and every one of them because uh, well, eventually, I gave them the English versions. He approved all of them. And we had to take the scripts back to late Baba Okediji to translate them into proper Yoruba. Baba Okediji translated them to Yoruba. By the time we had a test run of just one, uh, a coletta. It was uh, on uh, immunization. They were just there to watch the effect of people. And they, and they said, how? Oh, I can feel, I can feel how the people are feeling. Oh, you are signed up, you are signed up. We went to, from Ipe, we went to uh, that small building. A, 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 a driver on a market day, he went with us and he saw how people reacted. People at the market, yeah, they did fancy that we are going to immunize our children. So that direct impact on them made them to say, okay, come to the sign a, a, a contract. And they gave me a book. Some of the books are here. Uh, Health for All. And they had about 16 or 18 other programs in it. I just sat down, did my research, and made a script out of each and every one of them. And I didn't even stop at one script by one. Like eight, I had about four, five scripts. So after that, uh, I had to be taken to Enugu, taken to uh, Kano, Kaduna, to meet uh, the other consultants like me there, so that we can share our notes on how this would work out. So it became a national thing. There was even a book written on my program, they call it the Open Lab Theater published by UNICEF till date, talking about the efficacy of popular theater. In the style I do it. Uh, we did it for nearly 20 years. For nearly 20 years. And then one uh, of the officers, who I knew was the Department of Theater Arts came uh, and said, oh, popular theater is what we are doing. But the, there is a new formula from South Africa. They call it uh, Theater for Development, TFG. At the end of the day, there was not much difference from the much counted uh, a theater for development uh, to what we were doing. So when we finished with these uh, workshops, they continued to say it is better they even take the whole program to university uh, classrooms so that they can teach them uh, theater for development. And at the end of the day, people thought theater for development we're going to the bush. That's where the program ended today. Because I've not seen a graduate from that department to talk to anybody in the grassroots or to raise the finger to say they have done anything about the about the theatrical advocacy for women's health and children's development. But right now, from everywhere. I see have letters of thank you for having done that. 
people haven't done that from the unity. See, we lost light theater. That's why I want to develop it to the last uh, ounce. With that last ounce of the years for me to spend uh, 20, 10, 15. Uh, I'm going to make sure I walk very, very deeply. You can see I'm going to play stage out there. Stage theater. Because when you talk about theater, theater, theater is, uh, is me here on a stage and you there being fully entertained live. When you are talking about that, that theater in Nigeria now, what we have left of the life theater are projects from theatrical students dramatic art department students. They are the ones that are still making me happy in this country now. But talk about theater in its real sense of people gathering and, you know, we want to entertain audiences. You know, there's nothing like that anymore. I mean, nothing like that in the sense that the National Theatre have not had anything like this, except movies they printed. They now bring movies there. But I am telling you, in the departments all over the country, theatre arts or dramatic arts departments, they are still showing. I want to encourage them. I want to make them feel that real life theatre is the best thing, is the most money making, because when and if we can bring real life theater back, there will be a lot of people who know the world of live theater, who will sponsor theater with good money. Live state theater that will make you feel, feel like attached to that actor who had just finished. We live on the applause of our audience, not on the money that somebody has but now there's the time for that applause to turn into good money. The applause that we lived on can now turn to millions of men because people who are worthy of knowing the worth of uh, uh, live state drama are still alive, but even some of, some of you guys were brought up in London, you know the importance of going to the theater. You know the respect of being a good stage actor. You know how much, hey, hey, why can't we bring it here? That's what I am fighting for. That's why I said the house, um, 20, 24 years, I will die because I'm not going to die today. I'm telling God, I'm telling you. <laughs> we all agree. <laughs> And that's the one. Let us bring it back. When you have a good stage performance, you are the actor who carried your mind. You feel good. You feel good. At the end of the day, you feel like you, you, you are relieved of having given birth to a character. When you finish a, a performance on stage, the audience, at some point, I finish the performance of the forum if I was on a routine. When we were just giving men who gave me very well, can you hear me? We were going out, people were still sitting down, held, recounting what they have seen in that day, still fixed and looking at our exit, I see And we went in, after cutting cuts, we came back, some people were still sitting down where they were, a little bit relaxed, but now, getting back into what they have seen. That is theater for you. 
that kind of personal impact, that kind of personal interactive uh, grip is not in the movie. Because all of us know that they must have caught, take it again, caught, no, 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 stop, okay, go now, let's take it again, must have gone through. And that's the reason why I'm running away from it. Because when I take a character, when I take a character, when I want to perform like uh, uh, since we Banze is dead, where I played styles, is a near, near two hour uh, uh, show me the script. I played it with uh, Wale Okoyemi. We are the first team to play it outside of uh, South Africa at the University of Ibadan Theatre Arts Department. When you, when you pick two men in two hours, when you begin from go, oh, keep the audience with you in the next two hours. And styles in that uh, play, Oh, I when you have uh, uh, reached that point of playing that kind of, that kind of a character, you will know the serious nature in stage act. That's why I believe it. it's either I do it that way than to do it in court. They have to be built again. Take it, and then somebody else makes a mistake. Cut! So, that's how I'm very good. Anything. Because I want to play the role from the beginning to the end. And do that I have to do without anybody else. Don't make mistakes on the stage. Can't make mistakes on the stage. What I went on by is in the Can't make a mistake. How can you say stop? And then you get Kurumi. <laughs> you can't make a mistake. The Tottis. And the Tottis wanted to go and say, uh, let's join. Brother Tottis. Brother Tottis. When will you be quiet and come back home? You will say, not until I've been this great. Eh? Not until I've been this great. This great. I mean, look, when they play right like that, they're giving you good, and you as a, as a, as a, as a, as a performer, and a, you, you come up with it, and you, you create that total ambience. Follow me, I follow you. <laughs> In the, oh, that's, that's, that's the kind of last word that I that's one very important thing is I want to let some younger person I want to if you oriented them to be like that within these arms of the year to many other that was what you were here, they were not by the way, they were the way to But since I come to the way they have been treated in the you take the role and the role becomes the situation. Don't you have to get the public character. Like the character has shown the personality. And essentially, you should have to read the personal character. And you want to tell the stories on stage when you see the game, when you talk to the
extraordinary. When Uncle Jimmy gets on stage, I mean, he improvises a lot and it comes out so well. And you wouldn't believe that it's the same person who was sitting down with you a couple of minutes ago, just talking. He does whatever he wants to do well. You know, it's not when directors, uh, and I, I direct plays as well, not just my own. When directors uh, have to come across a script, because they're professional directors, instinctive directors, they already see uh, the kind of actors who would inhabit those roles. But it's not just directors, it's also dramatists, those who write plays. Not only do they see very often the kind of actors who would uh, take on these roles, they sometimes write for the actor. And even when they don't deliberately write for the actors, their writing is influenced by what they see in an actor or actress, uh, which they believe will, the combination, the synergy between that actor or actress and the role, is something which, uh, which the dramatist sometimes sees, and it influences even the way he creates the particular part. In the case of Jimmy, that when I was writing The Road, I already saw Jimmy in the role of professor in that play, The Road, it's one of my favorite plays. And indeed, uh, he would confirm, and, but he had to grow into it. But when I was writing it, he was, he was still not sufficiently professionally mature to take on that role. But I saw that he was going to be the eventual Professor, who was the one actually going to make that role, uh, if you like, a classic, uh, classic interpretation, you know, which would be, I felt, uh, almost a textbook for other actors. And so, in the training, the rehearsals, even for other roles, I was already grooming to be that role. When it comes to a situation like this, it behoves on me to, you know, be specific about which role, what, you know, how did you do it? How did you come about it? What did you do with it? How did you build it up? What problems, what the, at the end of the day? Yes. One role, one role. Uh, the 1970, in, 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 in apart from playing the lead role in the evening, in the afternoon, I had uh, folk singing, uh, 90 minutes stunt. I was not even waiting to go I came with the Oxford University player. Somebody, I think, saw me in another production that I accepted to do the Gave me one North African uh, era. There, and they said, that, Please come to university outside. And then I went to the school. It was fine. Very nice, you know, very, very good. At the end of the, I think we held it one week in the Grand Saint Paul, Edinburgh. Because the audience will just stand and clap and because those people there they know what the stage drama is all about they will clap applaud applaud, applaud and then you are gone oh. then the director or somebody will say oh, yeah, come back again. you will come back again oh, and say another take another bow they are still standing they are still 
again. That kind of a uh, situation has made me to think as an African in Nigeria. We try, we try, and we try you, we to play, and we try you. We to play. You can only try in Nigeria. <laughs> you can only try. But when you have played all your weeks, you can only try. But I want to build a situation where they will be frank and say yes. That's why I want the life theater. I am very happy. I have uh, a wife that went that day as a dramatic as person. I'm also uh, into entertainment. So apart from being his wife, we work together. We, we do a lot together concerning the business. So, because I graduated from theater arts, so we've been together any personal program that he has probably for television stage performances I'm always part of it. I can say we are in the same field. in the family of our baby of the house too as a dramatic as uh, my second daughter, Shayo, is in London. She has, she has her own uh, beautiful uh, page. She's doing dramatics and all that. Uh, every other one of them came to uh, pay Shayo, Shola. They are all dramatic. And I love uh, their life in my life. You know, if the father can say that, you can get the I love the life of all my children in my life because uh, my late uh, mother of Unicorn, Taiwo Kei, she was a broadcaster. Unicorn, too, she is into a lot of performances. Taiwo, uh, is given into different film uh, uh, shows and shoots. Uh, Kennedy, PhD theater arts. <laughs> so I've been surrounded, you know, with children that are uh, informed about this profession. And so it's been nice. Uh, I have decided to come back to Make uh, a fundamental use of the lands given to me free of charge by my family to do the dance activities. I took one acre and I'm building up an Igbo Asha. Uh, my friends in it uh, might not like me, but they will soon enjoy. I want to set up the Place build a stage building, you know, small, small halls and galleries and workshops where we can take people to traffic, their uh, art, contemporary, uh, you know, you know, voice usage. Who say voice training? Contemporary voice usage. And when you talk, people will listen. But most of the people who are there, when they talk, you know, the machine, the effective use of their body that we produce the voice, it's not there. I think uh, this should be controversial, but I think the craft factor has not really developed in particular. I, I hate comparing what I've done to what you have done, because circumstances are different. I think the resources available to point out what we could have to try to achieve. People complicate the process, complicate the problem, complicate the internet. 
opportunity every afternoon has to be removed. You have one coil with something. Tell them so you cannot use it again. Even I don't know if uh, people are familiar with the long one. You want to add that plate that is called the amphitheater. This <laughs> it's not even up to how many yards away. People use that before. So you cannot project. So that what is important is that you cannot feel it. You cannot feel the pulse of the actual state. You cannot feel the movement of the state. What is not there to act? Then you read that with the microphone, anybody can hear that. And when you see what they are doing, they are not acting. They are not really acting. Most of the plays we have on TV these days, they are not acting. It's not acting. When we were acting on stage, we know what it takes. We know how we do it. You know, it, you don't just go on stage and paint yourself and, and think, you know, that's just what it takes. That's, you know, we have to see it from you. We have to see that character in you as you are, as you are, you are, you are translating it. We must see it that it's real, it's normal, it's natural. So we are ready to train people in that and in stage presence. Every man is an actor. This whole world, we are all actors. But we can infuse into you a good stage presence that without even opening your mouth, if you have the wherewithal of stepping in on the stage, everybody will sit up to watch whatever you want to say and, and see uh, whatever you and listen to whatever you want to do or give them <laughs> all the places to Asha. The Ibudo Asha program from online. When we train people, when they start to walk, and I'm working on a lot of, uh, you know, affiliations, uh, collaborations, where people from all the uh, theater or drama departments that I have ever been involved with will be bringing their plays here. And any plays that we treated that will be taken back to their life. So that's the reason why this place is being set up. Don't even ask me about artworks. I uh, will tell you about that later. Artworks, yes. Would you believe it? All these artworks are created by me because I'm restless. When I have nothing else to do in the area of performance, Myself, I innovated these no paint, no brush artworks that uh, has uh, taken the interest of my mentor, when well, actually got the point and said, ah, gee. And would you believe I've been doing it uh, since 2006? That was, in fact, something I wanted to teach the children. Uh, and some kind of thing uh, on my programs. Just you know from which we can make usefulness of materials. From which we can turn them into art. So all the colors you see in any of my artworks are from the pages of newspapers. All these artworks you see behind me, I mean, around these uh, mini gallery are done by me. My mind is create this place so that at the end of the day, because there's no reason why an old man will say, I will not start something because I'm old. That is the best time you will have time. That is, that's the time you will have, you know, very, very, you know, fine time to do all the creative things you want to do in a place like this that we are setting up. By the time we are through, you will see uh, creativity. Uh, is the basis of life. You see, that's how we want to build up this place. If Udo Asha is equal to the abode 
of culture, the place of culture. We have a series for and I am very grateful for everyone. Looking forward to being in the ATM tonight because it is the evidence that people, like my ancestors, they live in one or seven months in the Bible. Thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Jimmy Show by Ayo Adeumi. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's still with us. And this is the end of the broadcast for tonight. Uh, although I was, I'll play a short video recording, two minutes that was recorded during the celebration yesterday. Um, yeah, tomorrow, we are at the National Theatre from 12, where we'll be reading from his play, HT, All Eye on You. And now, uh, and then uh, after that, we go to the to Bariga, where we're going to have a storytelling session with uh, Bariga Art Collective at uh, the Crown Art Factory, uh, owned by Shegun Adefila. And then on Thursday, we'll be at Lasso, Lagos State University, where we'll be talking to students of uh, theater and the music. But Friday is the grand finale at the Freedom Park. Uh, five bands have been listed to perform, and then including Boye Gadila, Yinka Lakija, Prime Q West, and uh, Yinka Davis, about five bands, and then about uh, 10 other performers, uh, solo, and the rest of them. And that will be the end of it, but that's not the end of Jimmy Chulanke's Shul celebration, because in November, we'll also be celebrating it uh, widely. And there may be also an intervention in the middle, uh, of this whole process. And please note that the book, um, uh, Jimmy Chilanke, The Indestructible, is going to be released later this month or by next month. So you can make your book. And then there's the album 
Oba and Wamba, which have just been released to. Those three projects have been produced, especially for Jimmy Shulanke at 80. Thank you very much for staying with us till this time. Somebody just reminded me that it's been here since four o'clock, and now you say almost 10. Thank you. Only Jimmy Shulanke will have kept all of us here at this time. But we honor him because he's a man of honor. Thank you and good night. I'll just play something just to sign us out uh, in case you, you have not uh, left yet. This is just like two minutes that I'm just going to play. And then it will be how he himself celebrated himself. <laughs>
Imoti wa dagba lagba se mo wa ye ibo se lo mo wo lu bo ti ri awon kan o ro njeje awon kan o ra sowo o mi ba bo loju mi ya mi ba ri mi o o ni ki yesu ko o ba so wi pe adara o ni ki mo Thank you very much. That was uh, a special tribute that was paid to Jimmy Shulake at 12 midnight of uh, yesterday. Just as he was climbing onto the octogenarian uh, step, that video dropped. Scott Concrete Communication Studio. And um, so it was a surprise for him to be, but he never anticipated, he didn't even know that he did a cover of that song. But if you are joining us at the Freedom Park on uh, Friday, You'll be able to see that particular uh, video and all the those people they will perform it live at Freedom Park. But then, just to sign us out, this is just one of the three promotional videos that we've done about uh, 
This this just another of the in the new album Oba Oba. Thank you very much. That is all about it tonight. And then we we'll see you tomorrow at National Theatre at 12 and at um, uh, Crown Art Factory in Bariga from 4 o'clock. Thursday, Lasso, Friday, Freedom Park. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Yes, the Bariga show will be on, uh, on Zoom too. Uh, the same link that you have for today, the same link that you use today, I'm addressing Aula uh, Inkaraji, please. The same Zoom link that you have today is the same Zoom link for tomorrow for, for the rest of the, of the celebration. Thank you very much. Yes. Good night and bye. <laughs>